Welcome to the Dragon Slayer Podcast. My name is Steven. With me always is Bailey. That was a weird <laughs> intro. <laughs> With me always is Bailey and our guests today, Jess and Brandon Disfossus. I got that right this you time. got that right. Yes. Thank you. From Idaho Real Estate, the proprietors of Idaho Real Estate, right? Yes. Awesome. And you're all over social media as well. In fact, that's, I think, how we know about you guys. Yeah, probably. You on social media, yeah. doing all this DIY stuff. Um, tell us about yourself and give us kind of the background of Idaho. It, okay. Start with maybe like where you're from, how'd you meet, and then we'll go with <laughs> Idaho. Oh boy, so, here we go. I like uh, it when they laugh I'll when start. I ask that question. So um, I'm, uh, I'm from Pocatello. I've lived there my whole life, uh, so almost 30 years now. Um, I, me and Jess met in college, mm-hmm. and we met through Instagram in college. I'll let Jessica tell the story of how we no, met. No, I college. want you to tell the story. <laughs> no, because mine's a lot nicer, and I feel like yours is more accurate. No, I want your version, and then I'll do my She'll version. correct it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, anyways, I was, uh, I think, we were, I was, what, 19? Yeah. So, we, uh, you know, we just were living the college life, uh, having a good time, and I see this girl on Instagram, and she just was constantly liking all my posts. Well, like that yeah. was the biggest thing. Yeah, literally, I, she just couldn't. She wouldn't stop. And so, I finally messaged her, and I was like, I liked. I was liking all of her posts and all that stuff. And I finally messaged her. I was like, so this. So, so it, far, so far, it's halfway true. <laughs> so, the so how did you problem, start? What was the first conversation? Was this like, hey, I great. see you've been it's liking my posts. I'll tell you why. Because okay. I was not, not cool great. at nineteen. I was not a cool person. <laughs> So I literally just messaged her, never talked to her in my life, and I said, so your number would roll. <laughs> no, like, hey, I'm Brandon, you're Jessica. Like a regular person. Like a normal human yeah, being. Sure. Yeah, sure. No. So I said, so your number would roll. <laughs> that was it. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, I bet. <laughs> <laughs> you do have to, like, admire the confidence, though. Yeah. I mean, you didn't walk away, obviously. No. True. I'll tell you what happened. Well, okay. <laughs> so that at that point, then, it was like. We were talking back and forth, and she was definitely not like into it in the in the talking part. She okay. gave me she gave me six of her of her numbers. <laughs> six of the ten. Six of so the, is that how you like, go? Your number would rule, like, and you would give. I'd be like, like okay, the, the first number is two. Oh, that's so funny. <laughs> but I don't think I actually like you yet, so I'm not going to give you the rest oh, of us. So funny. So it was good. Solid. Anyways, so that was cool. Uh, but then he then finally got my number. I got her number. We talked in on and off. Is that just you wore her down? Is yeah, that all it really pretty was? Pretty much. But it gets funny, worse before it gets better. Yeah. Funny, <laughs> I think she liked me. It was like yeah, we were talking like about Napoleon, Napoleon I think. Napoleon Dynamite uh-huh. or yeah. something like that. So she was like, oh, yeah, you're funny. So um, then, so that was that. And then we talked for like a week or so maybe. I don't know how long. But um, then it – so the sub is at, at Rendezvous. Uh, on the ISU campus. Mm-hmm. So there's this like big, huge stairway that goes down into the main common area. Well, I was like – we were planning on meeting there if, during in between class, and so I'm like, "Hey, let's meet." And she's like, "Cool, I'm outside," and I, and I was like, "Cool, I'm inside." <laughs> so, so I just wait a couple minutes. I'm like, "I just love." He's like, "Yeah, so yeah, well, maybe you should come if in we're here. staying facts. Yeah. This is where I'm at." <laughs> So then I wait a few minutes. Oh, I'm you like, tell this part though. I, okay. this, I, I was not aware of the, what was going on. Yeah, he was just like a dumb boy. <laughs> I'm like, okay, I guess I'll come inside then. Yeah. So I'm walking down. It's like a it's like a Disney princess staircase. Like you can see everything mm-hmm. from the top. Mm-hmm. I'm walking down, and there's like a little store and table to the left. And I look over and I see Brandon standing there next to the store, and he's talking to a girl, this like oh, cute boy. girl that I don't know. And I'm like, it works mm-hmm. every time. <laughs> yeah. Every time. So she's walking I'm like, up I'm to supposed like two to go people that she's never walk up to, to this person. dude I've never met in real life, and he's talking to this cute girl he's that I also don't know. Yeah. He's with his girlfriend. girlfriend yeah. <laughs> I'm the side girl at this point. <laughs> I'm supposed to act like it's not the most awkward thing sure. ever. Sure, yeah. So I did it. <laughs> Is that why you made her come inside? Because you're talking to this other yeah, girl? Yeah, honestly. He's like, hang I, on, I'm finishing up. <laughs> <laughs> and so it was actually, the com- com- No, I thought the conversation was fine. Conversation was fine, and then... When it was time to leave. So, again, I was 19. I was not cool. I get it, man. Okay? Like, yeah. I was I'm not a cool person. I'm glad we're doing video for this part. So, <laughs> so it, the bell rang. Or not the bell. It was just the, the time. The bell rang. There was, Recess no, bell, is there was over. no bell in school. In college. Um, no, I was like, I got to go. So, I said. So, I, you know, I'm expecting like. The bell rang. You know. Nice to meet you. Talk uh-huh. to you later. He oh. goes like this. What would you say? I said, see you later, pal. <laughs> <laughs> that is amazing. <laughs> And I, and I still got her. I still got her. But wait, at, right after that, I saw my friend and I'm like, I gave her the eyes like, 
help. And I was I was like, I'm not going to talk to that guy. Yeah. He sucks. Yeah. yeah. yeah and that was lame. Eventually. And then he was yeah. like, do you want to go get sushi? I'm like, yeah. <laughs> what? Interesting. So how did you go from friend zone? See you, pal. Like. To, yeah, let's go get I think sushi. It's I, was, I was literally, I was literally, that's that it. One. That was it. That <laughs> I was, was like, ex- I'm poor and I want sushi. That was the extent of the thought there. <laughs> that was it. I like she it. doesn't believe it, but like I wasn't, tr- I wasn't like going for her. I was just kind of like giving her a little bit. Oh, and I, yeah. She doesn't, she will, she does not admit to it, but I'm like, I think that's why she kept coming in because I was like, uh, I don't know. Oh, you She's like, always leave them wanting more. Leave you them know? wanting more. Yeah. That's exactly what I did. <laughs> and she won't admit it, but it's the truth. I won't admit it because it's not the truth. So you wanted a free meal, yeah. So you go to sushi, yeah. and that is magic. Or mm. she just realizes I'm not. I, I let my guard down. I think. Yeah, he just wasn't trying to act all like cool. Yeah, you know. Yeah. So I was like, okay. So did he like, like walk you. you to your door and do the bro handshake again? Or how did that go? <laughs> we did like it. Yeah, it was more. It was more intricate. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what happened after that. You worked on it all during no, the appetizer. Every time we see each other, right? we add something to it. <laughs> nice. And then we finally got to hugging. It was like. <laughs> Well, and that was just last year. Yeah. yeah. That was just yeah. last year. Yeah, I like it. So. Yeah, so anyway, so that that's how we met. Long story short, that's how we met. <laughs> Man, okay, so you get married. Um, and how did you decide to start this real estate company? Like, what was your life like at the time? Ready what was going on? Story? Yeah, okay. yeah. Okay, so we were pretty poor. Sure. Which is most people when yeah. they're young and married, right? Yeah. We, had a ho- we bought our first house, and um, we had this sweet backyard. Well, I was, so I was coaching CrossFit. That was my job. I was coach CrossFit. And Jessica was a... I was going to school full-time, and then... Worked the roadhouse a, a little bit. I had a bit, marketing job. And, but she got her marketing job later. So anyways, we were we made like $12 a year. <laughs> so um, we couldn't afford anything. So we did end up buying a inflatable hot tub. We really <laughs> splurged and got like a $400 hot tub. Uh, you know yeah. those? Have you seen those? Oh, They're yeah. Awesome. It was yeah. the best thing cool. ever. Yeah. And so we were sitting in that one night, and Jessica literally was like... It was... It, was, it, it cut me so deep. So we were sitting in the hot tub, and she's like, because I think we were talking about how we had no money to do anything. Mm-hmm. And she's like, I'm not having kids with you with, with this. Mm-hmm. Like, on $12 yeah, a year. Yeah, yeah. 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 you can't have yeah. a kid on $12 and so a year. So I was like, oh, that sucked. So I was like, okay. So then it got me thinking. So we were talking about like what to do. And so I, I used to be a painter, so I was like, I could do that. Or I had a friend that was in real estate, and he wanted me to be like his buyer's agent. And so I was like, well, let's do that, because I really don't want to paint. Sure. So... Let's work that. And so I went for that. And obviously now, here we are. So, But it was in the inflatable hot tub. So it was really a good start. <laughs> you know. This is where all the best yeah. ideas S- in take hot place. Soup. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it only got to 101. It couldn't get any higher. So. <laughs> well, so it was barely warm. Yeah. yeah. So it was lukewarm. Yeah. Well, it would melt the plastic. It makes sense. Yeah. yeah. So. Nah, that makes sense. Yeah. Okay. So... You get on doing real estate, and does that just take off immediately? What year is this? When did this actually 2018? happen? 2018. 2018. Yeah. So Brandon got his license first, and it was mm-hmm. later in the year. I think you got license in August. Yeah. So I started. I, I it was August of 2018. So almost 2019. I mean, really not that much of 2018. Yeah. And then by March 2019, I was like, okay, I'm gonna quit my job and do real estate with yeah. him. Yeah. Because he was getting so busy. Mm-hmm. When it first started, I wasn't helping him like with the marketing or anything. Mm-hmm. Like she was giving me ideas, but like it was kind of just yeah. Like we weren't really like a team, obviously at that point. And then it was like a light bulb moment. Like, oh my gosh, I'm super depressed at my office job. Oh, interesting. <laughs> and this is going great, and you're loving this, and I probably would love it too. Yeah. So, so super depressed at your office job. Yeah. What, just what like was it that was making you feel that soul way? Soul sucking. Just, mm. Jessica's you know, just not a. I'm a, just. She's like, not a. She can't sit in a, like an office for her. She's a very outgoing person and mm. not talk to people. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was hard, hard to just be like in my own world. And you were all doing day long. marketing at this marketing, job. Yeah, yeah, I was a marketing director, yeah. which it was a great job. I sure. loved the job. It just was not long term. That's super how a grateful. Lot of jobs are. Super grateful for that job. Yeah. yeah, and it was right out of college. It was great. But yeah, it just you know, and it was it was kind of good that I felt like that because then it was like. Okay, this is a clear sign that there's, you know, something else that yeah. I need to go do. Motivating. Yeah, it was super motivating. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And so I started. literally told so her, when I, I, s- I kept telling her not to because I was scared. I was like, we're not going to, I'm like, <laughs> but then finally she's like, I'm quitting. I'm like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, and it worked out. Yeah. 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 So, Idaho real estate, was that before you joined or was that? No, that, that was when she, she when yeah, she came, when we, came, when we came together, then we became the Idaho you branded real estate as team. Idaho yeah. And, and our brokerage is home smart premier realty. Okay. So mm-hmm. we're a team under that brokerage. Right. Okay. Um, and you guys have killed it. You've done really, really well in this space. Uh, yeah, I think, I think so. Why, why, why have you done so well? 
Um, well, I think it's a mixture. So obviously Jessica's marketing online has been a huge it's been great, and I want to talk a lot about yeah. that oh, in a minute here. Yeah, yeah. So her really marketing good. is what definitely jump started it. Like mm-hmm. we, me and her growing up in Pocatello, that obviously helped a ton because there's tons of people that know us. But on top of that, I mean, we we didn't just have to rely on like they talk about your sphere. Yeah, and that's you know what you're you're kind of banking on for your first year or two. Right. But we didn't even have to like bank on that because we had so many people reaching out to us outside of that just because of Jessica's starting marketing. Yeah. And Pocatello, I don't follow I feel like it's a little bit higher up in the game in terms mm. of online. Mm-hmm. But in 2019, no one utilized social media like they do now in terms yeah. of our area for real estate. Yeah, it's we crazy. came in at a really good time. And so yeah. we took it over like within a month. Like it was like everyone's... Uh, Everyone down there was like, that's dumb, don't do that, like all the other agents. And so we were Interesting. Like, so wh- why did they say it's dumb, don't do it's that? Because it's, it, it's a new thing, right? And just everyone's don't scared of that space, yeah. yeah. Yeah, Brandon was at a brokerage that I probably shouldn't name, but all they <laughs> told him to do, they basically were like, we'll take 10% of your commission and we'll teach you how to get clients. No, and they then, took like 25 or 30%. Oh, okay, well, I was being nice to them. <laughs> and they're like, you have to go knock on doors and you have to cold call people. Which is And he came home and told me that and I'm like, mm, I don't think I don't think that you have to do yeah, that. I think there's, maybe there's a place a for way. that. Maybe, there is. I but think yeah. The people do that, that, that works well. for, yeah. yeah. It works well for them, but I'm just like, I don't think that's going to work for us. So what and I so did, we've actually never had to do it, mm, which is amazing. This is my favorite cuz we didn't want to do it. Cuz we right. <laughs> Yeah. We talked to a lot of people like we've talked to bro- like our brokerage and we've done like a few classes for people and like the biggest thing that I did when I first started was I literally just went through every single like Facebook marketplace or anytime there was a post on one of our houses and anytime someone even liked it, I would go message them. And I yeah. literally was messaging like hundreds of people. That like, was basically his cold That's calling. my cold count. Right. And that got us going. It probably worked fast. really well yeah. too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it was, I mean, it was a lot of time. Like Jessica hated me. I was on the phone like, all the day, <laughs> but it worked out. I was really annoyed. And then I got my license and I was like, oh, I get it. Now. I get it. Yeah. 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 So that's how we started. Now, obviously we don't have to do that. We're right. in a good space, but yeah. That's so cool. how did you, uh, cause one of the things I really love about your marketing is first of all, it's very social media centered, but it also is, it's sort of adjacent to your space, right? It's just whether I buy a house with you or not, I still want to follow you. I still want to learn about what you're talking about. I want to learn how to make a mirror, right? I'm like giddy. You just said that. Cause that's my whole goal. Right. Of course. So, thank so you. how did you decide like, Hey, this is the angle that we want to take. It's the DIY stuff. It's the, you know, it's, it's cousin it. On a Roomba, <laughs> right? how did, we'll you talk about that. Yeah. Yeah. We'll talk the about that. The ghost is my favorite right yeah. now. I love it. How did you decide that's going to be our angle? Um, I think it's just more so like grown into that mm. over the last few years. Um, but you always had an idea. I always had, yeah, I did always have like an idea. I did get my degree in marketing mm-hmm. from my issue. Mm-hmm. And um, I got a lot of good experience with like internships and mm-hmm. stuff like that. And so I kind of just always had this idea of like, if you're trying to like appeal to someone, you can't just appeal to them one way. Mm. You got to you got to like think about who that person is and what other things they like and appeal to them in a lot of different ways. Because the chances are that somebody is going to see my home for sale post on Instagram and they're ready to buy a home right then, right there. It's pretty low. But if I'm like, look at all these fun, like Halloween ideas and you know, on my stories throw in, we have this house for sale, then I don't know, maybe I have a better chance of someone being like, Oh, hey, the mm-hmm. house is awesome. I want to see it because they're mm-hmm. looking at my page more anyway. Right. Well, and, and if they're, you know, used to following you and seeing your content, know your face, they your know name, you. they know you. Mm-hmm. And so when they are ready to do something, who do they call? They call yeah. You. I want yeah. I want them to feel like they can trust us, like they know us, mm-hmm. um, like we bring value, like we're entertaining to them. I want to yeah. be, you know. I forget all the facets. I forget exactly how the numbers work because it's been a while since I've read this book and I can't actually remember even what book it's in to be honest, but they talk about uh, your addressable market and who's ready to actually utilize your service or your product um, right now. And it's something like 3% of your addressable market. It's it's really small. Mm -hmm. Uh, Then they have, they subcategorize the rest of the 97% and people who are ready in the next three months, people are ready in the next year, people are ready in the next, and the whole point is to swim upstream from that 3%, right? right. Mm-hmm. And if you can capture the, you know, the attention of the 60 to 70% of your addressable market, as they become the 3%, that's when the magic really yeah. starts mm-hmm. to take place. Well, and something that like, like 
that was going on and it still goes on is like no one's gonna follow us if all we did was post real estate. You're right. Mm-hmm. Real estate. Yeah, nobody cares. Like right? there's there's you a very small market care. that cares about real estate every single post, right? Mm-hmm. So like we can't do that. No one's gonna follow. And our our market is Jessica's. Jessica has created who we like. No one. I mean, I have friends that buy houses with us, but like Jessica created our client. Like mm-hmm. she has made the way her posts are has brought th- those clients to us. So, um, what are you trying to say? Like we attract a certain, yes. Kind of yeah. Yeah. Okay. Jessica has made that, per, that client, you know, she's, there's not, there's a certain type of person that's not going to want to follow us. Right? Yeah. So that's, you know, it's, it's nice. Cause I, it's a very, what, yeah, you, you have Our a, clients a are really targeted, cool is what Brandon's yeah. saying. <laughs> yeah. 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 I don't know what the word is, but it's well, really you, cool. You have a, a really targeted kind of persona type, yeah. right? Like, you know, who follows yeah. this type of material and mm-hmm. you know, who's going to want to work with you. Right. Was that an intentional piece of your marketing to say, here's who we want to go after. Yes. Okay. Yeah, so, so tell me, how did you establish that? Like, what was the process? And you we had a whole class. We actually, yeah, I love it. classes about this. <laughs> Beautiful. So that's really fun. Um, so, well, uh, these classes we do, I always start out by doing like, I, I hand out like a questionnaire about your target audience. So I say, think about, and most of the time it's like newer agents. So I'll say like, think about who your ideal client is. Uh, what's their gender what's their age do they have kids Mm. what restaurants do they like in town what activities do they like what shows do they watch and like it feels like it's like really scary and like limiting to like put this ideal client on Mm. paper like Mm -hmm. this is the one person I'm going for but really what it does is it makes you like hone in on your marketing and what we found is like you can be attract, you can be trying to attract this one person, but you attract way more yeah. because other people identify with certain parts of that. Like you guys know Anthony and Brie Elizondo, they're agents here in town. I, I don't. I don't. Do you know them? Um, they're the top notch. They're top oh, notch oh, real estate. Okay. So um, he used to be at Home Smart with us, and we were doing this class one time, and he was like, I mean, they're agents, and he's like, yeah, if I was an agent, I'd, I'd have you guys. <laughs> you know, be my be my agent, sure. and he is like not our our tar- like on paper. It's like it, he's, he's opposite. Not the guy. Yeah. yeah, but I'm like, oh, that's really cool that you said that because that just proves you're gonna attract did more he, people. Did he express what resonated with them and why he I felt know. that way? Do you no. remember? No, I don't think he did. But like I've had that many times. Like I've been golfing with another agent. He's like, mm-hmm. if I was an agent, I'd just use you guys. Yeah. I like your content so much. You know, yeah, like, that's really nice. Yeah, it's just funny. <laughs> like I'm like, yeah, that's. Yeah. That's cool. Thank so you. it feels really scary and limiting to people, but I think it really opens up more doors. I've, you know, I've always, the way I've always described it is it's like getting a bow and arrow and walking into the forest and shooting everywhere in random directions and just hoping you hit a deer, right? Which, which is a ridiculous strategy, right? Mm-hmm. You want to actually take aim at something if you're going to actually bring it home. That's a great analogy. That's yeah. a very good analogy. Yeah. You, well, you're welcome to use it in the next <laughs> class. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and um, yeah, you're, you're totally right. If you try to be everything to everyone, you end up being nothing to mm-hmm. everyone. And so you do have to hone in to, you know, who's going to work for you, mm-hmm. you know? Right. Like Idaho has got a very big like hunting population. Right. right? Like, like we are not a tra- We are not going for that population. Right. Yeah. But there are some agents that are definitely more so in that style mm-hmm. and the way that they post mm-hmm. that they get those type of agents. Obviously, we have friends that are all hunters, but I'm not saying like, like it's just we aren't going out and posting a, a sure. deer, right? right. Like, so it's just like, we would never do that on our, cause that's like, it would just wouldn't fly on our page. You know what I mean? Like, no, I totally like follow. Yeah. yeah. So if you posted something that said, and it was like a deer and it was like, you could see this from your next home. <laughs> I, I'm on the phone with you right, right then. Right, there. right, right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'll do that. I'll post like that. I'll, okay. I'll post live deers. Right there in you the, go. In yeah. the, in yeah. the yeah. yard. Like, oh, look, they're in the yard. Look <laughs> <laughs> so cute. Yeah. 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 I yeah. like it. You got to be careful with what you do. But yeah. You sure do. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. So let's talk about that a little bit because there are some dangers and pitfalls of using social media as part of your platform to do a lot of your marketing. It's incredibly powerful mm-hmm. for good or ill, right? <laughs> so, what kinds of. Um, I always like to ask this with anybody who's involved in social media, what kinds of negative feedback are you getting on the content that you're producing and, and how does it like affect you? Are you like, Oh, I don't care about that. Or, or are you like, Oh, that helps me hone in better to what I'm trying to do. I have recently learned the power of the block button and I've never been more empowered. I'm like, block, block, block. On one one of our videos that's going crazy, everyone's accusing me of being like an abusive husband. Yeah, literally. (laughs) And and honestly, it's just like recently, like I've been doing Instagram for a long time consistently and it's just like in the past 
month or two months mm. that I've had a few really blow up. Mm -hmm. And so we actually haven't had a lot of right. criticism and my feelings are hurt very easily. <laughs> So I'll like stew on it all day long. Like, but I will say the majority of comments are very sweet yeah. and very nice. I'm like, okay, this is great. And then there's just a people few like, like Girl, run. the I'm people, like, the people who are mad enough to comment are like really mad. Oh yeah. And you're just like, it's just a Roomba. Take it easy. <laughs> Literally right? the yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Well, did you see the, so the Harry, the one that the Harry Potter lights, did you see the yeah. candles? I was, on oh, the, yeah, yeah, I was yeah. on the island putting the stuff up in the ceiling and I was recording and Brandon comes home. I didn't like, know she was doing that. I can't see shit, Jessica. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I, and I immediately TV. start laughing. I'm like, this is hilarious because this is the reaction I want from him. Right. I like to get a rise yeah. out of him. Right. And I know he's kidding. He, right. loved, I, he freaking loves it. He, but Hang on. Pause on that. Okay, okay. I got him a Michael Myers costume, <laughs> like the jumpsuit uh -huh. and the, and the, the mask. mask. Yeah. And he's like into it. And it's <laughs> scary. Like we walked in and you were like, oh, you're big. In the jumpsuit, he looks seven I bet it's tall. terrifying. Yeah. I, just, I just stand There's outside of my house There's something about a one-piece on him. Like he is like to the ceiling. Yeah. Okay. It's so how, how tall are you actually? I'm like six, three, four. I but he know. legit yeah. looks seven feet tall in I a jumpsuit. Yeah. And a scary mask. And he leaves it on for like 20 minutes too long. <laughs> 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 anyway, just so he's like, so he's like me. obviously into it. But people, some people on that video are like, you guys are going to get divorced. <laughs> He's so awful to you. Like, I can't believe he talks to you like that. I'm like, I walk in and the entire ceiling is hanging with everything. And I can't see the TV. I'm like, what is going on? And she's standing on the counter. I'm like, okay, whatever. But like, it's that's just my initial reaction. I was like, I can't see shit. But it's okay. just people's like different perceptions of yeah, it. Like maybe totally. they've been talked to that way in a, in a super like actual negative way. Sure. Because I'm his wife and work with him and we have nothing apart from each other. I know that he's not actually being serious, right. you know, so it just, it comes, it sometimes it comes across different to different people because like of their experiences. I'm like, am I really that, am I really that bad? <laughs> Honestly, there were only like three people that said something, so you're doing pretty good. Yeah, that's not too bad. Yeah, it's interesting how people will see a 10 second snippet of your life mm -hmm. and then project all these other things it's about it. Projection. It's really interesting. Actually. And it's funny because yeah. another person like made me out to be the bad guy on that video. Oh, interesting. So that was super interesting. Like, like you were trying to kill your husband or something yeah, like, like that? Yeah, like that was yeah. so rude well, like, how, how dare you not listen to his feelings? <laughs> 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 we're like, oh, everyone's good. We're all good. <laughs> yeah, I honestly, it takes... I'm trying to think the last thing I commented on on social media. I know. I just don't. It takes a lot. It takes a lot to act in a paragraph. That. I'll yeah. put like a word. Yeah, yeah. Or like cool. a smiley face. Yeah, smiley. Yeah, nice. Or I'll tag someone, but I'm never going to be like paragraph after. Like there is like. Novels, yeah. I'm These like, are people, people analyze I'm everything like, in the background. Block. These are people with too much time. Yeah, totally. Yeah. 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 yeah, interesting. Yeah. Okay, so. Um, you have that I saw at least a couple of really big videos that have hit. Uh, let's talk about Cousin It. S let's I think the last seven point two million. So that one is the Broomba. Right. That's the. So that was before Cousin It. Oh, Cousin It okay, was okay, okay. the sequel. Sequel. I, I mixed them up. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, the Broomba one's more interesting the to me anyway, personally. Yeah. So tell us about like how did you come up with the idea? Broomba. How did you? package it like what you know, was the strategy i'm in it? the scroll hole one day <laughs> and <laughs> this lady had posted that she had like a store-bought vacuum yeah that just goes around just to like has wheels yeah and i'm like oh that's awesome i go look and it's like 95 bucks yeah. i'm like i don't really want to pay 95 bucks i could just make it let's see if i can make it that's kind of my idea is like I want to see if I can make something before I go buy it, mm -hmm. just because I enjoy it. Mm -hmm. And Did you grow um, up doing stuff like that? Yeah, it, I yeah. Gr I grew up like really, really poor, mm -hmm. and so it kind of like we just didn't buy new things right. ever. It was like repurpose what we already have, yeah. or like maybe you're lucky and find something at a thrift store. And, it so, and I actually well. love She's it. Like ready to roll. Like, <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah. My whole outfit is good. One. I love <laughs> I'm it. I'm not lying. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. You look great. I Thank mean, you. you would My earrings are TJ Maxx, so I did splurge on that. Yeah, but, yeah. Um, yeah, so I, I grew up doing that. So it's just I, I like, found a joy for that mm -hmm. over the years. And now it's not out of necessity, which is really fun. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now it's because I actually enjoy it. Yeah. Um, so I was just thinking, well, I have a, a Roomba that will make it so it can just, like, move around on its own. Mm -hmm. So how? So then I start thinking, okay, well, how can I attach it to the Roomba? And then I'm laying in bed at night, like, I can do this, I can do that. <laughs> <laughs> and, and then in the morning, I'm like, let's go. We're ready. Let's do it. So then I got my plant saucer. My plans have improved through the next versions. <laughs> <laughs> but I had like a flat plant saucer from Lowe's and I gorilla glued a cup to it. 
drilled a hole in the cup and stuck a stick in the cup, <laughs> <laughs> glued it all together, mm-hmm. had a, a dollar store hula skirt to make right. the, to make the, you know, mm-hmm. broom parts. And then I used, and this is what people didn't understand on the first video that made me so irritated because there were way too many comments about it. Velcro command strips. They're like, well, now you can't take it off and you ruined your oh, room okay. by that. And, now, <laughs> and some guy's like, under her furniture, so dirty and gross. She's <laughs> oh disgusting. I'm like, does nobody like vacuum or sweep? You just think your Roomba does it right? right? We didn't even use our Roomba, really. Yeah, our Roomba, our kid just ruins it. So I'm like, right. we're not, like, we, our Roomba doesn't right, do it. just right, he like surfs it. <laughs> so, I'm like, anyway. Yeah, some of the comments on that one were insane. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, it's Velcro, so you can take it on and off. Yeah. So that's, I thought, I'm like, oh, I feel genius with this Right, one. yeah, yeah. And you just push the button and stick it on. And So when you it posted goes. it, did you think, this is it, this is going to go viral? Oh, absolutely not. I'm <laughs> well, like, this is so stupid, and I before. love it. <laughs> I mean, our average like was like 6,000 views. Like, mm-hmm. it wasn't like a lot of like, and that, that one just... We were going to New Hampshire. Like, it was like six weeks, and my Instagram was just constantly blowing up. So I finally just had to turn off Instagram. Because it was like every second there was a new like. Right. Insane. Yeah. Yeah. I've never had that, so I'm like, this is annoying. Yeah, it was all new to us. We're like, oh, my gosh. (laughs) Okay, so um, you had no thought that this might blow up. No. and, And be huge. How many, like, new followers did it generate? Well, when we posted that, we were at... Like seven or eight. I think like seven or eight thousand. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And now we're at like fourteen double mm-hmm. or something. Yeah, double. But that's been like I had like like two or three that did really well. Mm-hmm. So I think between all of them it bumped up that much. Yeah. Um, okay, so that was the first big one. Mm-hmm. And then the mirror one, I think I looked, it was like one point seven million or mm-hmm. something like was that. I think on TikTok that one. Oh, okay. I think on Instagram that one didn't do as well, but mm. on TikTok, on it, TikTok did, it did, which is interesting. It's, yeah, oh, it's you can post the so same opposite. video. Yeah, yeah. It's so yeah. fascinating. Because then, then on TikTok, the Broomba didn't do that well. Yeah, it's but then it's like the best one, probably that we'll ever have on Instagram. <laughs> yeah, maybe. I, mean, I don't know. Yeah, that's a lot. So Almost eight, that yeah, was seven or eight. Yeah, that's a lot of people have viewed it. So yeah, yeah. So when yeah. you made the mirror one, were you like, this one is gonna do well? Do you have a sense for it at this? I point? I kind of felt like that one would. Only because I really, really tried hard to find somebody else that had done it. Because mm. I wanted, like, to be able to copy someone else. Mm-hmm. Yeah, sure. <laughs> like, there's a million out there that, like, they just go to the thrift store or wherever and get an existing mirror and then do the things on the edges to make it look like that style. Mm. But I, I had never found one where it was, like, a humongous Yeah, mirror. custom cut and yeah. everything. Yeah, yeah, I'd, yeah. I didn't ever see one like that. Hmm. So I kind of had a feeling with that one. Just because it's it's such a popular mirror, mm-hmm. and then, to my knowledge, I don't know if anyone's done the big size one. So. Yeah. Okay. I want to ask about the mirror. Tell me about the mirror. <laughs> Thank you for asking about the mirror. <laughs> that was a big deal for her. It was a big deal. Every time I walk by, I'm like, oh, it's <laughs> nice. So you did this big project where you what is that type of mirror called again? So anthropology. Uh huh. It's like a. You know, ladies really like it. Yeah. You I've probably never haven't heard of it. Heard of it. Yeah. <laughs> it's a big um, thing. Have you seen the mirror before? Yes. Okay, so it's their gleaming primrose mirror. It's like a vintage style. Yeah. Like, Very beautiful. Kind of art deco y a little bit. Gi- they make different sizes, but the big one, I was like, I need that. Yeah. But then I'm like, I don't really want to pay how two much grand. Got two grand for a, and it's pretty big, right? It's like, humongous. Like, like it's, it's like seven, seven feet tall. Seven feet tall, five feet wide. Yeah. So that's it's humongous. Big. I mean, it's but like for heirloom. Two grand. Yeah. It's like, yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. but then after I made it, I'm like, oh, I get why they charged you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we were having a debate about this. How long? Because it's all in a couple of videos yeah. that last like a total of like four minutes. Yeah. How long did it actually take you? How to long do, do you think it took minutes. me? It, took it was only four minutes. <laughs> <laughs> you saw it all. <laughs> um, uh, I want to say it was like a good week okay. of work. What's your is guess? what I think mm-hmm. it was. Mm-hmm. Yeah, probably a week. Okay, I would say it took probably. I would say it probably took a week, mm-hmm. but that's not like, not that's like, like, that's like nap time design. Sure. Mm-hmm. and like after the kids go to bed before I So like two to, three, two to three hours a day probably. So like probably, maybe yeah. so 15 hours, something 15 hours, like that? It's yeah. a long time. It's a long time. It's very beautiful though. I'm super proud of it too. Yeah. It's amazing. Thank you. It's perfect custom for your I lo- wall and everything. I love it. Yeah. 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 It's it, so fun. Yeah. Like you don't, like my dad showed up and he looked at it and he's like, 
He his was face. He was hilarious. It. It was <laughs> losing not it. Like that, she made. He's it. like, like, "Oh, I like your mirror." I'm like, "Thank you. I made it." And he like did like a double. He's like, "No, you didn't. What? That's not you possible." Made that? I'm like, "These hands have magic." That's what he always says. <laughs> These hands have magic, Dan. <laughs> I love that. Oh my gosh. Um, and okay, so and I think it, it costs you like six hundred dollars yeah. to make, right? Six, of just raw yeah. material. Mm-hmm. Um, worth it? I would say worth it because I enjoy working with my hands. Mm. I don't think I'd make it like a couple of people asked me if I, if I would make one for them. And I was like, she's like, yeah, I'll charge you $2,000. I'll charge you two grand. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the process for me, it was like super enjoyable. I like, it was kind of like a puzzle, like figuring out how can I do this? And then mm. it's super satisfying to be mm-hmm. like, Oh yeah, it's pretty close to the real thing. Totally. And I, and I, even if it's not, I love it. I couldn't tell the difference really. Thank you. Yeah. Um, okay. So if you found another spot in your house and you were like, Mm, we really need another one of these primrose mirrors here. <laughs> would you make it again or would you just buy one? Hmm. You'd probably make it because you're faster now with it. Yeah, I'd probably make it. At East Idaho Credit Union, we're changing the future of business with our Velocity Money Market account. You can receive unbeatable returns on tiered interest rates. We have rates up to 2.02% annual percentage yield. East Idaho Credit Union puts local businesses first because when you do better, we all do better. Federally insured by the NCUA. So you mentioned the difference between like Instagram and the traction you get there and Mm -hmm. TikTok and the traction you get there. Mm -hmm. Have you cracked the code on why something works on one and not on the other at this point? No idea. No idea. Yeah. Honestly, I haven't thought about it that much. I don't know Mm. if I care that much because for me, like each one has different goals. Like Mm -hmm. TikTok, honestly, for me, it's like kind of just more fun. Mm -hmm. And like hopefully it funnels people over to Instagram because Instagram for me is more like, like I don't really care to be viral. Mm Mm-hmm on either. Mm -hmm. I want to be able to like reach the people I want to reach. And ultimately I want it to be people who are past clients or they're going to be clients or even they just like live near us and want to chat or like need help with something. I want to be able to like educate them with real estate and like entertain them and have them like connect with us in some way. Yeah. At the end of the day, we always have to go back to real estate, right? Yeah. Yeah. Like I don't really like, yeah. My goal with Instagram is to not have a bunch of followers all over the world. Right. If all those followers were right in Idaho, I'd be like, awesome. This is, this is amazing. Yeah. Well, I think, you know, one of the things that's interesting is the generationality of the different platforms that mm-hmm. you use too, right? right? Like TikTok is pretty well dominated by Gen Zers, yeah. which are probably not your biggest client no. market. I, not yet. I would get, not yeah. yet. One, <laughs> one day. Yeah. Yeah. Well, probably not with this. With the way yeah. Probably not. not at the it's moment. Pretty depressing. Yeah. Um, but, but then like uh, millennials and Gen Xers are pretty heavy into Instagram. Mm-hmm. And, um, and so that probably makes more sense as your target market would be my guess anyway. Mm-hmm. Um, so you, you mentioned, you know, some of the fun we're having in the market. So for those listening, we're recording this in late October of 2022. So tell us what's going on in the market right now for real estate oh, man, and, and how are you feeling about it? Dun, dun, dun. Um, no, I'm just kidding. It's, no, it's, it's, it's so I it's, think on the surface, it seems pretty daunting and yeah, heavy, yeah. but so, I, I mean, don't think it's what it is, is as you guys know, and Idle Falls was even crazier than Pocatello. Right, for like, sure. Was, I mean, well, and Boise but, is even crazier than, right. than this side of the state. Yeah. yeah. The biggest thing is, is we, we were so used to just things selling within a day, within 20, you know, it was just so fast and you couldn't keep up with the listings, right? Well, when you give out free money, that's what happens. Right? Sure. I mean, 2% interest rate is free. Right. Um, pretty much. So what's happened now is obviously there was overinflated values, mm-hmm. which from all the overbidding and all that stuff, and interest rates have changed and pretty much doubled your mortgage, mm-hmm. right? So the average buyer is not going to be able to afford even close to what things are going for. So things are now dropping down to – I mean, I, I don't know what – it's hard to keep up because things are still selling. Right. But I mean, I'd say it's like a 90, 60 to 90 day process now versus. Right. It's much Versus longer. two weeks. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. And so things are still selling, but your your price is not overinflated mm-hmm. because no one's overbidding. Mm-hmm. So you're putting it at, you have to go, it's the weirdest thing. You have to go back and look at it. So like, let's say I'm, I'm going to go list a house. Well, you try to be about three months, right? Three months back is what you're going to look at. Well, three months ago, interest rates were totally different than they are now. Sure. So you have to take away what, you know, okay, this house sold for 500, but now you've got to look and go, I mean, you might be 460, 450 because of the yeah. way that interest The mortgage is doubled now. And that hurts that it. seller because right. they're like, well, this is what sold for that. So it's just a game of now, like you've got to, we were trying to time the market going up when we were selling before because everything was going up and mm-hmm. now we're trying to, you don't want to, I mean, 
the worst thing that happens, right, is you just have to drop the price, but you don't want to do that if someone needs to sell quick. Right. Yeah. So it's, it's just, it's a but very... But it's hard for buyers. Buyers right now just need to look at, like, the monthly payment. Mm. And sellers need to understand that it's not like it was last summer. Right. Like or it's, even last fall. You always hear about the people that are like, well, California's coming. Or, you know, like all the people yeah. like, California can just come pay cash. Well, they're done doing that. Like, yeah. that's not a thing anymore. Yeah. Like, COVID's, yeah. COVID's, for the most part, that, that rush is done. Yeah. So yeah, the demand has dropped significantly is, from out of state. Right, yeah. and so that's not a thing anymore. I'm like, you can always hope for an out of stater, but that's not a thing. Like that's, you're gonna get that anomaly, but you're not. We're getting people that are either moving here for work now, mm-hmm. or they already live here. Mm-hmm. So you're not getting the. Maybe you are here, but in Pocatello, you're not. Like it's yeah. not even close. So no, I, th- I think we've. Uh, Statewide, even Treasure Valley, that's started to slow down in a major way. Yeah. There's been like hundred thousand dollar price drops over there. Right. So right. Yeah. I, looking at some of the stats, um, and I don't know these super super well, but basically your time on market over the last couple months has like tripled. Mm-hmm. The the demand has dropped significantly. The the supply has shot up because of that, and right. so you know interest rates have caused people to start dropping you know, prices on things. And so, yeah, it's, it's, um, it's definitely changed like on a dime, right? Oh, really, yeah. really Within quickly. A, yeah. Yeah. And it's, really and a quickly. lot of people, like a lot of agents don't, aren't ready for that. Yeah. Like I brought in offers but and they've been just hounding me because I brought in offers below asking price. I'm mm. like, well, maybe if you bring it in and ask him, I'm like, well, we're not going to do that. Cause it's like, well, know. are you going to get another offer? I'm like, it's yeah. like, no, if you get an offer, you're like, okay, what could, like, if it's reasonable, right? Like you're not going to take a ridiculous offer but if it's a reasonable offer that's not at asking you got to get with your seller and be like hey the likelihood that we get another offer in the next couple of weeks is not it's it, i it's mean you amazing. may or you may not right but i, I can't tell any, but like one offer now is like okay what can we do to make this work how can we how can we put this together so you've got to and you know obviously you, you may not make something work but if it's thirty thousand dollars off you got to try to it is an interesting somewhere. time right. to buy it's, right it's now because though. of that. Yeah. Like we know interest rates are around seven point mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. whatever. And there's talk that they're going to get up to 9%. Mm-hmm. Um, we're also going into fall and winter. Mm-hmm. Which it's a really good dead period that's going to happen. I think. <laughs> it's going to be a really good dead period. So if you're buying right now, it's a really interesting time to have a lot of buying power. Mm. And um, like we have some buyers right now that they're going to have a baby. So they're like, like near Christmas, we're like, crap, we got to buy something and mm-hmm. we don't want to pay 9%. So they're just planning on refinancing whenever they can. Well, and there's lots yeah. of options right now too. Cause like, like I've, I've heard of people that have been able to get, and I, no, it's not, I mean, it's still not an ideal rate, but it's definitely better. Like you can get buy downs all the way to like 5% mm. if you do the right offers. Mm-hmm. And so if you can get a buy down for the first year and the second year, hopefully interest rates have changed by that point. Right. And then you can, then you can refinance at that point. So, yeah. I mean, there is options, but it's definitely not like it was. Yeah. Just, so, so what are you coaching your buyers to do in these scenarios then? Is it, is it that, or uh, how are you talking them through the process most, of buying something right now? I'd say it's, it's mostly, we look number one at the payment. So people are like, I need this payment to be here. Well, if their payment's realistic and it's like, okay, well, you know, 250 to 300 is where we're going to have to be. And if they can look at that and be like, okay, this is the house that we can deal with and we can, you know, we can pay maybe even a little bit more, but refinance it later and hopefully mm-hmm. have a better rate. Mm-hmm. Then I'm like, okay, let's go look at that. But if they're like, we need our payment to be less then I'm like, okay, well, we need to look at what's not really available, obviously like the 200 thousands, but it's just going to take a lot longer. And you let, and you let buyers know that like, it's not a, a weak process anymore. Right. Like I, I mean, I work with people, for months on end now. And it's used to be, I worked with months on end because we couldn't get anything because we kept losing right, out. Right, yeah. But now it's like, we got to find as things are dropping, you're getting closer to that 200,000 again. And so mm-hmm. like that for us where, I mean, she's 28 and I'm 29. That's a lot of times our, our sphere is of the buying power, right? right. Like it's the two to three hundred, And so we worked that a lot in terms of, you know, as things drop, you got to keep an eye on that one and we'll go check it out once it's getting closer to your price point. Mm-hmm. That's really all you can do right now. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. You can't. But I think right now too, you can be looking at houses a little bit above the you can. price range because mm. sellers are more likely they're gonna to come you down. can meet in the middle a little yeah. more now. Yeah. It used to be if, if it was listed here, you are going to pay Correct. 50K more yeah. or mm-hmm. something. Yeah. 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 So you you can do that too. It's just, it's hard to bank on that, right? Like you're like, sure. oh yeah, let's go look at a $400,000 house, but they'll take 350. Like you can't say that. Right. right? Like, yeah. <laughs> but... It is more likely now, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> How are you coaching sellers in this market? Like, as they go to put a house up for sale, I'm sure a lot of them are still hoping and thinking, oh, the getting's good and I'm going to get a great price. Yeah. 
how are you helping them understand the shift in the market? Well, I think now, so last summer it was like this, right, with the prices. Right. And then we were in this really interesting spot where everything plateaued right. because sellers were still expecting it to do this. Mm -hmm. And buyers are like, I'm not meeting you up there. Yeah, I'm staying I can't here. Do it. Yeah. So it was like this for a few months. And I feel like, like now, now that the interest rates are high, now sellers are starting to understand. understand. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's just having that conversation with them. For example, we had this beautiful house in Chubbuck. Um, maybe I should, maybe, maybe this is going to do bad luck on it. It's not closed yet. Yeah. So I don't know if I should talk about so, it. <laughs> so I'll, but, just, I'll just tell you about our listings that we've had and we do have currently. And that way you guys can kind of like, so I've been listing and I'm like, okay, well this is sold for this. So we probably need to bring it down. Right. When we start the listing, because that's, you just have to do that right now. You can't plan on what sold three months ago to be at the selling price. Um, and so most people now they've seen that and they understand that they're mm -hmm. not, I mean, they understand that. Okay, that my house, that whole house sold for seven hundred. I'm gonna go for six seventy five or whatever. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, okay, cool. Yeah, we could probably make that work. Um, but the big thing now is, I, 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 did you guys buy a house in the last two years? Yeah. I did. Okay. Yeah. Well, do you remember how you could literally put up anything and it would sell? You didn't even have to stage it. Half you the didn't time. buy it with us. Yeah, I didn't. I, I, <laughs> <laughs> I love that you um, called you out. <laughs> I moved I, from out of state. Okay. I, didn't, I didn't know you so, guys. Yeah. Okay, so you might okay, not have had a good. Whatever. You might not have had a good. Did you walk through the houses here when you were doing it, or? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we went and saw. I don't know, probably twenty places. Oh, cool. Something like that. Yeah, most of them were gone like within seconds. Like as we were driving away. Yeah. 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 So, a lot of times you didn't. In the last few years, you didn't have to worry so much about staging. You didn't have to worry so much about like. Like the house could be honestly in not great shape yeah. and it would sell. That's the place I bought. <laughs> <laughs> so now it's like, okay, well, you you do need to do all of the – it's it's to pre-COVID market again. You need to do the things that you need to do to get mm -hmm. it to sell. You need to stage it. You need to fix up your holes. You need to clean your trim. It's got to smell good. It's got to smell mm -hmm. good. And people aren't oh. going to offer – or they're not even going to finish the walkthrough at this point now if, if you have a terrible – yeah, the place Set that we bought, the basement smelled like a thousand cats in here. Oh, you'll never all forget over the place. it. Gross. Yeah. You did you have to overpay it. for it? Yeah, I did. Yeah, <laughs> I did. So, I, we ended up paying, I think it was like 40K over asking. But you're probably still in a good, good place now with it compared to where you were. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So we the same day, like we closed, I got the keys. And I went over and I tore out the carpet that was and like bleached the floor <laughs> underneath. Oh, no. Yeah, it was bad. Yeah. So <laughs> it's just a totally different setup now. It's just... Pre, you know, when I first started listing, um, when I was, you know, in 2018, 2019, we did so much stuff. Like, it was so fun. Like, Jessica would set up a binder. We'd have all these – we'd have a lot of cool, fun things going on for the listings. And then it got so fast that it's like, okay, I just put it on the MLS. Okay, it's sold. You know what but I mean? But we like didn't we, even have time to think about, like, what are we going to do marketing-wise for this? It was already gone. It was you gone. just didn't have to. Right. Yeah, yeah so you didn't it have was, to. It was, it was easy money at that point. Like, the last two years was 100% easy money for listing agents. Mm -hmm. Um and now it's back to the point where we have to put in work again. Yeah, you gotta nice. be creative. You gotta yeah. actually work. And you've got to, And so all of our listings. I mean, I told Jesse the other day. I'm like, we've got like 12 active listings. And I haven't had 12. That hasn't happened in years. Ever. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Do so you like, do you feel like like real estate agents got a little lazy over yes. the course 100%. of the last yes. two years? Mm -hmm. 100. Mm. percent we had, we had well, I don't know if I would say lazy. I would just say like the efforts being put elsewhere because mm. because it's not like we had more time on our hands. It was right. like it was your time is busy. being spent on more deals. Yeah. Yeah. I We had one. We ended up firing them because they irritated us because of this whole thing. But we found a place that we like. We live out in the country. That's where we wanted to live. And when we moved up here, we were like, you know, this radius around Idaho Falls. And so we went to this place that was like 40 minutes from Idaho Falls. And they were like angry that they had to go out and show us this place that was oh 40 gosh. minutes away. And, um, Anyway, it really made me angry. That's awkward. We fired him. I, I, I think you should. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and that's that's something where it's like in a situation where that, like I would have one of my other agents that we work with go show you. Because sure. it's like, okay, yeah. I don't want to go that far. Go have someone else do it. Yeah, you know what sure. I mean? Yeah. But you can still help them, and you can still, I could still be involved with you, but that's, yeah, that's silly. Well, they um, were angry because we didn't like the place. They were like, we had to come all the way out like here. You, and you didn't even like, Yeah, they were all that's up in arms about it. Yeah, I was actually really Yikes. ticked off about so, it. Yeah. In that regard, yes, and there, and I don't know. Yeah, I've I've done some deals up here, and it's a little bit more uh, cutthroat up here. It is. Oh, yeah. interesting. Yeah, yeah. Well, Pocatello is a little nicer. So yeah, people are a little nicer down there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe so. usually, right? For uh, to us, anyways. to you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I those think. are your not people. people. He's talking about the agents. Agents, not the people. Agents. But they're your people. Yeah. You yeah. know. Yeah. 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 That makes sense. So, anyways. Yeah. 
Um, but yeah, no, it's a whole new market. It's it's, it's fun for us because now Jessica gets to get her. I fired her on real estate for the last few years. <laughs> well, I mean, we didn't get to our whole backstory, but we during COVID had two kids all of a sudden. Yeah, from no kids to adopting our daughter and then had our son 10 days later. Wow. So at that point we were both working 16 hours a day doing real estate. Oh, and that had to change. And then it had to change literally overnight. That was like a reality check. That I'm like, oh, yeah. I don't think I can work that much right now. <laughs> 16 hour days are rough when and you've got two young kids. That's for sure. One like, yeah. yeah. So yeah, leave. I took maternity leave and I never really like came off maternity leave. Sure. <laughs> no, Sounds I said awesome. no. I am yeah. now. I no, am now. I'm working. I'm but back I, to working I, now. But we have my sister now that helps us do a lot of the paperwork and stuff. Yeah. So shout out Terry. Yeah. So <laughs> if now Jessica's whole job, like in, unless I ask her to like go show a house and then she's like super mad at me. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm the agent you fired. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm not mad at you. I'm mad at him. <laughs> okay. <yeah. laughs> um, but uh, shut she, up. I love showing houses. No, she does. Shut it's, up. It's, but she. She is very inconvenienced on it a lot of the time. Because well, most of the time I have a two-year-old with me, right. yeah. so, yeah. so it's, yeah. nobody likes that. Yeah. Um, but uh, her job is, I said, I want you to be the marketer. Like, and that's obviously helped us a ton. Like, yeah. I, I want you to focus only on marketing. So. Yeah. yeah. So how do you guys plan? I, I don't know how long this particular turn in the market is going to last, and you know, none of us really do. How do you plan on weathering that going forward over the next year, two years, whatever? ends up being we did a lot of other things as well we have a lot going on but also we don't really like stress about it Mm -hmm. we're i mean this is our long-term career Mm -hmm. we're in it for the long run we're not like trying to sprint to any sort of destination we're just kind of like you know these are our things we do and we're just going to keep doing them. well and if if you're if you're smart at all if you've done the last two years of, of real estate every it's been really hard to not be successful the last two years i mean you literally didn't have to do anything Mm -hmm. besides here's my name and let's go look at a house. Right? Right. And you had to be available to go show a house. Yeah. Um, so, you know, our, and our, our my my broker, uh, Elias, he's really been really good at making sure that like, you know, when the market changes, it's not always going to be like this. So make sure you have your rainy day fund. And mm-hmm. we definitely have a rainy day fund. Mm-hmm. So we're okay that way. Um, I mean, hopefully it's not 10 years because then we won't be okay. But, sure. you know, <laughs> sure. yeah. um, we definitely have that rainy day fund. But we've also done some other investments that have brought us a residual. Mm. And so we're... I would say okay. Hopefully. Yeah. Do you, <laughs> do you see the fear in his eyes? <laughs> the fear of okay. <laughs> Jessica doesn't stress about money as much as I do, so we'll just let, I'm just I let her. Live yeah, there. I did my time stressing about money. Yeah, so it's not my time. <laughs> like he's still figured out. <laughs> so what do you hope the next? I don't know the the big plans for Idaho Realty over the next five, ten years are. What do you What are you hoping to accomplish? What do you want to do? I want to still be doing the same thing mm-hmm. in 10 years. I don't want, so our, was, it wasn't this summer. Like, I, don't like, I don't want to. It was yeah. last, it was last summer. When was our busiest summer? Like, like in terms of time. It was time. 20. It was during COVID. 2020. So it, was 2020. it was when I was pregnant. Yeah. So that was, was the COVID, busiest yeah. we've ever been in mm-hmm. terms of time. Cause I obviously just, co- it was me and her. And then all of a sudden it was just me. Mm-hmm. We made a ton of money, but I literally was like, this is not worth it. It was not. Mm. No, life was, it was hard. Too much. It was too much. It's not worth working from. No, 8 a.m. to 9 p.m. You gotta day. have yeah. your mental, yeah. and so your mental health. For us, where we're at now is awesome. We can do whatever mm-hmm. we want mm-hmm. in terms of time, for the most part. And we have other, we have residuals coming in. Um, obviously, I'm not complacent. I don't think I'll ever be complacent. But I like to be able to spend time with my family more than I like to, obviously, work. Sure. Which should be the thing, right? But that for a minute there yeah, was Yeah, before like, there was no work-life balance. Now I've got no five balance. kids I'd rather go oh to work. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. I just, I'm kids. happy to come to work. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I bet you do. But, um, <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. I just felt bad because it was after we had our, our son, and especially Tosh, like, I lost a whole year of their life, essentially, because mm. like I didn't, I wasn't really there. It was mm. like we were, like, scrambling, trying to figure out our new normal because mm. it was just so much all at once. Mm-hmm. Like, I you can, know, you can't Not only having a state. newborn, but having a traumatized four-year-old and becoming instant parents it was like on top of our mm-hmm. real, and then our real estate business. was literally a rolling like it was a, a wheel that we couldn't yeah stop. right yeah, yeah. so yeah. it just had like, too much momentum good, going. good problems yeah. it was a have. great problem but like just needed I, some time to catch up <laughs> and now we've caught up and we've done our things that we want to do i've got we do a ton of flips um we have a ton of rentals we have a management company that manages cool. rentals we own a restaurant like it's just oh wow yeah what's yeah. the what's the restaurant well it's, first of all let's say we have 
a ton of amazing people that help us and that's the only reason why sure, we can do any like a fifth of anything we yeah. do yeah i don't do the yeah so we have awesome contractors we've got awesome family that has, take our kids all the time now <laughs> um and we've had um Terry and Janae are on Terry our team. Terry and Janae that help us. Yeah, so Terry's our transaction coordinator. Janae is our secretary for the management, and she's like a boss on that, so it's great. Because um, I'm sure if you've ever dealt with rentals, it's a great time. I, I personally never have, <laughs> have but you I've been heard a renter? lots of stories. Have you been a renter? Uh, when I was first married, okay. when I was young, yeah. Okay, so if you have a bad landlord, that's terrible. Yeah, we would break the toilets. And, would they ever come you know, fix it? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, jeez, what well, are you we'd doing? We'd knock over the refrigerators. <laughs> what are you doing to the toilet? <laughs> It was a sledgehammer. They just <laughs> yeah. Um, We'd painted all kinds of crazy colors. Oh, yeah. You know, typical renters. That's normal. Stuff. That's actually pretty normal. Yeah. <laughs> we manage like 100 plus rentals. So. Oh, my gosh. So, like, it's very. It's do, very you, like, do you own those all or just, we, or just we through own, your management we own, company? I think, I think there's eight or nine of those that we own. And the rest are know. just through your like management doors, company. Eight or nine yeah. doors. I don't know. Um, anyways, all of them, we take care of all of them, right? Right. And so, the big thing is, like, people. Uh, renters appreciate you if you take care of their things that are broken. Of course. So, yes. like, that's my biggest, like, I'm like, okay, is it, like, what we found out the other day, a, a dishwasher hadn't been fixed for a month, and I was freaking out. I was mm. like, are you kidding me? <laughs> like, you know, so, like, just things like that that we have to be on top of, and that's, but it's, I call that the economy-proof job. Mm. No matter how bad the economy is, there's always going to be renters. Yeah, yeah, that's right. So, that's that, and then... Um, Oh, we bought pods too. That was cool. Oh, storage pods. pods. Yeah, yeah. Oh. storage pods. Cool. Yeah. Okay, what's what is that all about? Just, I don't know. We just bought some storage pods. <laughs> <laughs> pods? You ever just want a pod? Yeah, just sit in your backyard or like it was no, on, no, no. That'd be fun. That would be cool. <laughs> like you know the house. you know the Sorry. storage you know the storage pods that are like movable. Uh, like a uh, like a truck picks it up. Okay. Puts it on the truck. It's and just then a drives storage it. unit, but it's movable. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. All right. I don't know. I thought it'd be a good idea. It's like a you know real estate involved. Sure. We yeah, needed adjacent. we needed an yeah. investment. Yeah. Okay. Um, so that's have, cool. Have you liked it? Is that gone? Okay. Yeah. And so we're gonna partner up at some. We point haven't done with, a whole lot. Oh, of it okay. Yet, okay. But, but they we'll are just sitting in your backyard. Though. No. Literally. Yeah. They're <laughs> used. The best part about it though is I'm like we live in them. Yes. They're our house. We're hoping nobody rents them. Nine percent interest. They're like, are these for rent? And I'm like, no. They've got my toilets in them. <laughs> the, uh, uh, I just use them for like, I'm like, if you're uh, buying or selling, you just want, you can use one. Like, it's like, you want a pod? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. I mean, it's I a mean, good So deal. it's like another thing, you know, it's another piece of value for our clients. Yeah. Okay. So I guess I have seen the ones where you can like load them up, load, like, like drop it off, you load it up, and then they move it to your yeah, new that's place. The one. Is that the same yeah, kind of deal? Exactly. Okay. Yeah. I gotcha. It's a good that deal. That makes a ton of sense then. Yeah. 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 So I'm like, why not? It, so, you, so you're like this close to owning a moving company. Yeah, but we're not a moving company. No, thank you. I'll never own a moving company. I have some friends right that own here. a moving company, and it, they a do nightmare. really well, and I do not even want to be involved in that. So, I will say I've um, I've used them, and they're worth every penny. Oh, we have too. Every penny. I Preach. hate moving stuff. Especially with five children. Oh, my mm. goodness. Yeah. We, we used to stuff. like moving yeah, it's a when lot it was just us two. No, and you then we liked moving. Okay, I, I really love moving. Then we had two kids, and I was like, I don't think we should ever move again. I understand. <laughs> I'm feeling. good. Yeah. yeah. It's painful. Yeah. It's painful. Man. So the Sorry, restaurant. Topic on yeah, we were going to talk about the restaurant. No, yeah. that's okay. Yeah. That, that's all awesome. So the restaurant. Tell it's us about the restaurant. It's called Cielito Lindo. Cielito Lindo. Mexicana. Oh. <laughs> good job. Uh, Very I nice. I can't speak much. I can't. I, I learned that's Spanish. That's the extent for, of your Spanish right there. Well, when we were putting yeah. it together, so our partner is from Tijuana. Okay. We had a, a restaurant in town. We sold his house. We've been friends with him. He for a managed years. a different restaurant mm-hmm. in Pocatello. Mm-hmm. So he finally came to me. He sold his house and he came to me. He had some cash and mm-hmm. he was like, "I want to start a restaurant." And so we went looking for like rentals mm-hmm. for a restaurant, and it was terrible. And it was like five grand a month for like the worst thing. Wow. wow. So I'm like, "This isn't gonna work. Like, there's no way." Because mm-hmm. they were tiny. So I was like, "Let's talk about what you want to do." Mm-hmm. So we we talked about it for like 24 hours, and then all of a sudden I'm like, "Well, do you want me to?" help you do it and he's like yeah so then we decided to do so it. did so you <laughs> buy the building or you rented we bought, you bought the building we bought the building yeah and renovated it and then we're half owners in the business the restaurant business yeah we're silent partners yeah in the, cool in the restaurant okay where is this restaurant at for people who want to um, go uncle Check james it it's the 10, old 10, uncle jim's building 10, in pocatello it's, it's 10 10 pocatello Ave. it's right across from the what's police that? station police station so hmm. Safe area. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> At least quick There's a liquor store <laughs> between <laughs> the restaurant and the police station, so stop there first. Yeah, I literally almost described it as that, and I was like, probably not the best. 
thing to say. It's right I next feel like that says a lot right. about you, Bailey. I think yeah. you're right. Cheers. Yeah. It's, on, it's on Yellowstone, though, so it's like an excellent location. I couldn't not buy the building because there wasn't even We got such a good deal on it, too. We got such a good deal. I was like, we are buying this. Because other buildings were for sale for like... Three hundred thousand dollars more and way worse. So hmm. I'm like, oh, I can't not buy this because yeah. it's like, it's a great deal. Yeah. yeah. So it was like all of a sudden, like, oh, we're buying a restaurant. Okay, let's do it. That's, That's like awesome. how a lot of our business decisions are made. <laughs> hey, the, you know, this thing happens. Like, you have to be opportunistic, right? Yeah. When something comes yeah. up, if you think on it too long, someone else will take it. That's away. right. Yeah. So That's we. Exactly right. I mean, obviously, I think there's sometimes when I haven't thought long enough, but <laughs> we've all been I definitely there too. Don't, I definitely don't think. Too long with that stuff. I can't remember who said this, but they said like the essence of leadership is making uh, really important decisions too quickly and with not enough information. <laughs> yeah, and that's, that's what makes a good leader. Uh, well, that's well, right. that's the job. Why that's not? the job description, right? I mean, yeah, that's, that. that's about yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I buy it when we buy a house to flip. I mean, I look at quick numbers, and if it looks good, I just go for it. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't, I'm not like, oh, am I going to lose money on this here? And, uh, mm-hmm. There's totally always a possibility to lose Yeah, money. a lot of times I don't even know that we're buying a house. Yeah, Brandon's so- like, <laughs> oh, hey, you're supposed to come to the title company. <laughs> we got to <laughs> sign some stuff. we got to sign yeah. some, literally. Oh, <laughs> but that's, what are we buying? <laughs> don't worry about it. Just get down here. <laughs> yeah. Right, yeah, right. She's fired. She doesn't, doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> Too tired. I'm like, okay. That's right. <laughs> Um, so tell me about the flipping side of the business. Yeah. Like, how did you get into that? And uh, what's it like? Our I guess. first I'm flip so interested was like out of the park. Did awesome really deal. well. Yeah. Well, it's just the house it was, itself on the market was super was unique. Up. Yeah. So I, even if you did nothing to the house, you were probably yeah. going to do fine. Yeah. 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 So like our first flip was kind of scary, but we were like, okay, let's do it. Like and it I did a lot of work solid. myself, which was dumb. Yeah. Yeah. yeah sure. It was stupid. Yeah. 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 Um, but it was a sweet house. Not because you did a bad job, just because he needed That's to time. spend his right. time yeah, elsewhere. Yeah, that's hard to do. So yeah. we did that, and then I started hiring contractors. It took me way longer than I wanted, but we ended up selling and, and making a huge profit out of it. And so it's like, well, that was awesome. Yeah. And, and so, it was fun because we sold it again. to some clients that couldn't find what they oh, wanted. Oh, that's really cool. So, And we've been able to do that with a couple flips. Mm-hmm. Like even on one there of them, a, it was a single mom who literally couldn't afford anything in the market. It was like so in I the, just gave it was her in like the rush. So, yeah, we just gave her a super good deal. We're like... Yeah, there you go. I'm that's like, awesome. hopefully that's brownie yeah. points later on in life. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's right. Yeah. Lost a lot of money on it, like in terms carb. of what I could have made. Mm-hmm. But I was like, I feel better because it's a single mom with that's kids awesome. and camp. I was like, that's cool. Yeah. That's so, really yeah, cool. Yeah, that was yeah. a fun one. Okay, yeah, so I have to bit. ask, yeah. how do you come up with your names for these flips? <laughs> <laughs> she asked. It's so fun. It's my favorite. <laughs> I love it. So I feel like I'm walking through and I'm like, this feels like Phyllis. <laughs> well, <Right? laughs> there's only been one that we're working on right now that I'm like, I don't know the name. Just don't well, have the inspiration yet. So we got a call from our attorney on. Um, Maybe you like, should do a trigger warning. Trigger warning. Trigger warning. Yeah. Okay. So okay. Um, this is our first of this this style. I've, I've had the grossest like flood, <laughs> fire, molds. Like we've dealt with all those. Mm-hmm. Haunted. Um, this one's haunted? Uh, it's Probably. close. Close. Oh, so okay. could be. Haunted with a few things. So no. this, this, it was in June. I got a call from my attorney and he's like, hey, I've got this lady that she, she needs to sell house. And he didn't give me very much information. So he's like, but I gave you your number. So give mm-hmm. her a call. Mm-hmm. Or he gave me, he said, I'm going to have, I told her you're going to call her. So I gave her a call. She's like, yeah, let's meet over. Well. Wait, did they tell you before? No. Well, she told me once I got there. You didn't know before you no. went over there to I just there? thought I was going to look at a flip. Oh, my gosh. So I go to the house. Biohazard team's there. Oh, no. I didn't know that. So they're cleaning up a dead body. <gasps> oh, my word. And it's the sister of the, of the it's owner. It's the brother. The brother. The sister. Um, yeah. And um, this lady is super nice, super awesome. But uh, she's from nine hours away. So she's like, I got to get rid of this house. Like, I can't. You know, yeah. What yeah. So, what to do with it? What happened? Do you know I don't what know. happened? He, I didn't get, I didn't want to ask. Like, that's yeah, not something that, sure. that he, they were older. It was an older person. So uh-huh. who knows? It could be all sorts of it things. It could be, yeah. She sure. was obviously distraught. I wasn't trying to, and this was like a couple days after. It wasn't like, I wasn't at the scene, right? But like, right. at that point, it, it was in June and he'd been there for five weeks. Mm. So anyways, that was that, th- we ended up getting the house and, uh, Jessica, I don't think you've even walked through it. I don't want to go in there and make you sad. <laughs> it's too sad. Yeah. So I want her to walk through it, though, because I'm like, it, it it's actually doesn't look that bad. It was a hoarding house, and like it's got mm. the black floor and all that stuff, but it doesn't look that bad. But you open the door, and it yeah. hits you. That's yeah. Bad. And that's my first ever experience with that. And that's my partner crazy. on the flip is, uh, 
he deals with that stuff all the time. So what do you do? So what do you do? Like obviously the Burn. biohazard. <laughs> you got to rip out a lot of stuff. You have to rip tear out, out like every, oh yeah. And, oh yeah, it's a lot. Now I'm following. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. So anyways, that's the first. It's we've rough. had all sorts of like we had one. But it's like someone's got to do it. Like you can't just let well, that sure. house sit there. Yeah, you can't just abandon the place. Apart, right? Right? And it's a perfect size starter home. So I'm like, mm. we have to go through. And we and the nice part is it's small enough. We can do everything we want to it to make it just awesome. Yeah. So yeah. Is that one under contract right now? Or is it we, we bought it. We, we own it. We own you, it. You we bought it. We're going through the that. renovations okay. process. Um, when are you planning on putting it up for up for sale? Do you know? Probably two twenty five. Two twenty. Yeah. Yeah. It, we, My goodness. Did you say when or how much? How I much? don't know, but that was how what much? I asked. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I wanted. I thought you said when. He's like two twenty five. I was just no. curious about what a house like that might go for. <laughs> well, it's going to be brand new, so like we've yeah. got to go through and like I mean I'm talking everything new, like. We're down to the studs. Down to the studs. Yeah. Yeah. So it's going to be a full cut. So you got to get rid of everything in there. Yeah. 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 Now, do you have to, I, I don't know real estate law, but do you have to disclose that somebody's you do not. passed in this if place? If someone asks you, you, have can't, you obviously can't lie about it, but you right. actually don't have to disclose that in the state of Because, I mean, in reality. Same with hauntings. How many the times? The house is haunted. Mm, okay. Yeah. Sure, Are there places where you have to disclose, like, yeah, it's haunted? Is I'm that sure in different, different states? In different states, yeah. I'm really? Sure. Yeah. I, I, I don't know, but I, you know. I don't know what state, but yeah. That's fascinating. So, so legally, to... we're declaring supernatural events to be real. That that because that's what that I know. Means, it's right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't. Know. Yeah. Well, true. I guess because there's obviously that. been enough like evidence and problems that that's mm. like a rule. I mean, I feel like they should put Pokey High as legally. That's not a rule for no reason. Pokey High needs to be put as legally haunted. It is haunted. I went there. It is is so haunted. haunted. Really? Yes. Yes. YouTube it. When they changed their name, uh, and someone made a good point about why not to do this, but when they changed their name to the Thunder, Mm -hmm. I was like, they should have been called the Phantoms. (laughs) I know. (laughs) That was so perfect. That would have been perfect. Totally. Yeah. Hmm. (laughs) <laughs> this is you're this, new here, this aren't is, you? This is taking an interesting turn, I have yeah. to admit. Yeah, this, I did Pokey's not got think that. Yeah, well, Pokey like, Tell is super Pokey, haunted. Pokey, I've got tunnels underneath my, Pokey, yeah. you know that. My really? mom yeah, has Not a, just the ones going into downtown? No, no, no those like downtown ones. Like, there's like, like underground. Like prohibition. Like prohibition oh, tunnels. Oh, yes. Mm-hmm. Like there's a lot of cool stuff down there. My mom owns a building on Main Street that used to be a brothel. Wow. It's a cool place down there. Like, I'm like, her building is totally haunted. I know it. Dang. Like, cause yeah. I mean, I don't fault size. They're cool downtown, but they've renovated so much of it that like mm-hmm. it's not really like you a downtown can't. anymore. Totally. Yeah, yeah. Sure. Well, it's not an old downtown. Still right, right, right. Mm-hmm. How long have you lived here? I've lived in Idaho for 10 years, but in, in Pocatello, I lived for like six years, so I've lived longer. Oh, okay. The Pokey cool. video. Yeah. On the bathroom. YouTube. What is the that? Bathroom the bathroom Pokey video. The bathroom. Did like you see that one? No. That sounds like something I don't know. Like literally you can see like a It's on their security cameras. Like a figure go into the bathroom and it flushes and then they come out. You can see it. Was it a person or no? It was just like a like a white figure. Like a It made the security cameras turn on. That it, it like made all the cameras go. So if they can walk through walls, why would it trigger emotion? I think it's I don't know. I don't know. Don't I don't ask me about ghosts, I don't know, but it was all over the place. What do you mean like the toilet motion sensor? Well, what do you mean? the lights flipped on? Did they no, open like, the door? No, like the camera. No, the like cam- the cameras. Like but you can see the whole screen of cameras and like how there's like the different squares. Yeah. They're all like they only turn crazy, on when like, there's movement. Right. So how does it detect no, why, the movement you if they're know not? That. The camera. You the, your security cameras won't turn on unless there's movement. <laughs> wouldn't they just always be recording? Well, yeah, they're recording, but they don't go into night vision until it's like. Something's why would happening. you know that about Pokemon High School security system? That's a normal security camera. That's a whole other thing. thing. I think you know. I don't know. Zach, are you watching it right now? I'm watching now? it right Look now. Look at his face. See? <laughs> <laughs> Pretty legit. Creepy. And it was like before. You haven't seen it? No. It's, it's a good. good one. I haven't. So are you telling me that that could not be fraudulent in any way? It could I, be, but it was I so, know the it, people who recorded it. And they would not be making it up mm. because this happened right mm. after I graduated high school. And it was like mm. the administrative staff that oh, like geez. caught it and, and recorded it. What year was that? It. It's like 2013. 2013, oh, okay. I think. So, or 14, then, maybe. At that point, people were not very savvy. Mm-hmm. On, like, no, maybe. I don't. Yeah. Because it's because it's on their monitor and they're like videoing with their phone. Oh, mm. weird. Like, it wasn't yeah. like a main. It's not like the mm. video. It's a video of the video on the computer. Interesting. Interesting. Did you, um, what do you think? Uh, do you think it can be fake? What do you, what do you guys think? I don't think? think it can be fake. Zach? Well, I don't. Knowing the people. I don't, I don't know the people. Anything could be fake. You look, you look <laughs> like you know computers over there. But that was a pretty good video. <laughs> <laughs> so you're, you're into it, Zach. You think that's He's the real it. deal? This is, my, this is my first experience of watching this. I'll watch it a few more times. Okay, watch it again. <laughs> I like, Andrea, I like, what I do you think? Andrea, is that, do you think that's real? She's shrugging her shoulders, maybe. Well, probably regardless probably mm. it's a good video maybe. i mean if that's the worst maybe. a ghost is doing is like flushing some toilets you're like All right, yeah right. it sounds like Have he's fun. just doing you a favor yeah, yeah. Thank you. but like well, the problem is is like everyone's always talked about pokey being haunted mm-hmm. so like mm-hmm. 
I went to school there and you could feel like someone's watching me. <laughs> like I would go early huh. in the mornings for student government and it's like creepy. Do you think that there. might be like a, a self-fulfilling prophecy though a little bit? Like, like everybody I, told like, me it's like haunted and so I come. feel like it's oh. haunted. <laughs> well, right. I, I, add, I made it haunted. Like I haunted it. <laughs> I'm astral projecting <laughs> to my high school, hey. going to the bathroom. <laughs> well, let's talk that about where Pokey's located next to the funeral home. Yes. <laughs> the, the, yes. Is this the crazy you, funeral home? Yeah. Yes. And it's oh, ongoing. I don't know if we yeah. should say too much, but yeah. I, I've seen that, it in that the news. That place has always been weird vibes. Really? Yes. So just you got yes. so much oh, stuff man. right there. It's like, you can't. Just, yeah. You just got to plan it. <laughs> There's I have so much regret. There's I used to walk. I lived on Fremont Street oh, you right did? there. And I used to walk home like late hours right by all of that stuff. It's so scary. From the liquor store? Or from, from the <laughs> liquor store, <laughs> past the funeral home. You didn't need to call me up. <laughs> <laughs> oh my sorry, gosh. Sorry, we went off topic. I don't know what we were uh, Yeah, what, what is this podcast about? I got it. Did you see the article about ISU the other day in uh, Gravely Hall and oh, all Gravely the places? Hall has always been. Tell uh, me more. But they were just talking about all of the hauntings and the um, research that they've done on it, and I'm like, you're gonna need to send it to me. Yeah, great. Yes. Okay. There's a lot of haunted stuff. I don't cool. know. Yeah, I. I'll be honest. I've always wanted to see a ghost. I'm like super want. interested. Like in real life. Yeah, and what I've even like people have been like that place is haunted, and I'm like, cool, let's go check it out. And I nothing. I get creepiest nothing. things that I've ever you're seen. Too, I want you're to. You're too open to it. When what? I, they they yeah. want to. They want to make a point. <laughs> Yeah. Just try being like, no, I don't believe in it. I think it's fascinating, though. It I is think, fascinating. I, I think it's really interesting. Yeah. So back to the tunnels, though. So I, okay. when I was painting, like I was painting one of those old houses or one of the old uh, buildings down there, and like you walk down like s- super far, like pretty low down there, mm. and like it was just a piece of plywood that was covering that one, and we opened it up just enough to look through, and I was like, yeah, I'm not gonna go in. <laughs> you just made me have a recovered memory at Pocatello High School, in the wrestling room. There's like. It's just this really weird setup. Like everything there, it, like it's so old. It Can all you used wrestle to be a used. ghost? <laughs> Incredible. <laughs> oh no, like the setup's like weird. Like all this, all this stuff in like the second building. It's it was like made to be something else. So now it's just being used for different purposes. Anyway, just a really weird room on the way to like the like weights wrestling area. Oh, if I could get a ghost in a headlock, guys. <laughs> oh my gosh. Ghost, are you listening? Yeah. <laughs> Um, we had this awesome janitor, Fred. He just died. R.I.P. Fred. Mm. We all loved him. One day, we're all walking to weights, and he's like, you guys want to see the tunnels? <laughs> oh, my god! <laughs> we're like, yeah. He yeah. opens up this door that we have never have even noticed before, but walk by it every single day, and it literally went into the tunnels. Mm. Like, from and the it was school? From the school. That's so cool. Wow. Yeah. Was the school a different something? At I don't know. No. no, I think it was always the school. It's always been pokey high. But it also Weird. burned down once and got rebuilt, so I don't know. There's lots There's of a lot of history I don't know. There. Maybe he was just telling us it was the tunnels, but it sure looked like the tunnels. Oh, they're dark and scary. They're it was not, dark and scary. And most tunnels are. Cement, yeah. like, cinder blocked up. Oh, weird. Cool stuff. Oof. Anyways. Okay, Pokemon well. Tunnel, cool this is a tunnel that, podcast so. now. <laughs> <laughs> Next tunnels. on Ghost Hunters. Yeah. <laughs> Golly, that's crazy. Okay, well... Um, I have a question here, but I don't feel like there's any good segue for it. I'll <laughs> no, just go to, hey, <laughs> we'll cut it, go. It. We'll just cut it. Action, we'll, we'll go. Move Commercial. At Eastside Oak Credit Union, the success of your business matters to us. Michael from Adrenaline Outdoors received one-on-one mentoring with one of our industry experts. With that advice, Michael has been able to grow his business and serve his customers more effectively than ever before. You don't get that kind of care from anyone else, only at Eastside Oak Credit Union. Visit us at eastsideocu.org, federally insured by the NCUA. Um, I, I want to ask this as well. Um, you guys have done really, really well in your business, and you have a really strong uh, angle for how you do real estate. What kind of advice would you give to the next generation coming, right? To people who are just starting, who want to figure out how to do things. Like, what are the lessons learned, the hard earned wisdom? Well, let me tell you one thing we did right off the bat yeah. when I joined that I feel like put us in a really good position to like be viewed as. Professionals. Professionals. Is um, we hosted a first time home buyer class. Mm. So we partnered up with a lender and then, where did we do it? Uh, at, we did I it, it at, was like at a local. It was like, a, like a, a brewery eating place. I don't know. Yeah, it was, it was like, like a, a local brewery. And yeah. we had um, we had like tacos. We had it catered. People could come get drinks. And then we just like hosted like how to buy your first house. Yeah. And that I think those were done, but they weren't 
they weren't marketed very well beforehand, yeah. and so we did it in a different place. We didn't do it in a real estate office, which is super boring. I wouldn't go to one of those. Right. Yeah, no. Yeah. But if it's like, hey, if you drink or if you want some free tacos, like, and you're a home buyer and you already have seen us on social media, you kind of have an idea of who we mm-hmm. are already. It'll, it definitely was a really easy way to get 10, 12 couples there. That's yeah. pretty good. But I not like only that. was it like we had a good amount of people show up, but it also like helped us later on. Like I had a, f- a couple people message us months later and be like, I saw you hosted that class and now I want to buy my first house. Can mm. you like send me resources and like, can you guys help mm. us? So even people who didn't go were yeah. like, I know you do Yeah, this. just because they awesome. saw it on Facebook That's and they're great. like, oh, they, they must know what they're doing. They're hosting a class. And then right. Jessica and came out with the best thing ever after this. Oh. It was... Uh, I, or maybe even before, but we did. She made a uh, downloadable. Package. She's like, I have no idea what he's talking about. I have no idea what he's about to say. <laughs> well, you know, it's a, th- so we have the listing and selling guides. Oh yeah, buying oh. and selling yeah, guides. Yeah, so you can mm-hmm. just like go on our website and download like our our buyer and seller. Yeah, so I saw like, those. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, yeah. that was not really like that's a thing now with a lot of people, mm-hmm. but like back then, again, here in this area, it was not a thing. Mm-hmm. Like so, yeah. it's just, I think we did a lot of first here, mm-hmm. especially in Pocatello, and that helped really get us going. So did you? Were you like looking at other people who are successful and like stealing their ideas, or was this all just like I, I had my been my own genius? She'd been turning, but I I churning. look at I mean I, I'm sure I took inspiration sure. from from people. I feel like I've me seen. and you looked at a lot of the like in like California, right? Yeah, like yeah. Where the, it's yeah. already been a thing. Other and markets, I would say yeah. that's a good tip for people. Like definitely don't copy people in your market. You're right. just gonna piss people off right. that way. And it's and real estate is all about relationships, mm-hmm. not only with other agents but clients, obviously. Mm-hmm. And if you're just like blatantly copying what someone in your market is doing, don't do that. No yeah, yeah, but like, yeah. but look at a bigger market. See, so, see someone you like what they're doing there, and yeah, maybe look at, don't don't like copy them, but yeah. like you know, take inspiration. Sure, totally. I mean, anyone, make it your yeah. own. I mean, none, sure. like I'm sure. Again, none of the things we were doing in other areas were first time, but like here in our area, they were. Everyone was like, "Oh, you guys are like breaking through," but really, it was just looking at what someone. You know, we're always a couple years behind. Right. So I have a good tip. For there, there's some advantages out. to that, right? right? Like yeah. Idaho typically is a little behind Correct. some totally. other areas of yeah. the country, and you can figure out the Shoot, wave a year before Boise. it hits you. Yeah. Like, I look at Boise, and like they're like a year or two ahead of yeah, us. Yeah, I'm like we're five away, five years away from doing bubbles and Botox parties. Yeah. <laughs> what is it? Botox and burgers. <laughs> what? What is from that? Selling Sunset? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> so they did an open house with burgers and Botox on Selling Sunset. It's like a big oh, they did. Thing. Like to get people to the open. Where house. was this? Was in like LA or something? Yeah, that they did that? have you seen it's Selling LA. Sunset? It's a joke. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's, it's an a absolute joke. joke. <laughs> oh, okay. I'm unfamiliar with this. But <laughs> don't watch it. It's worse. It's like the Kardashians, but worse. But for real estate. Like yeah. 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 Jessica loves trash I, TV. Oh, I love trash TV. It's yeah. so good. It's like cotton candy for your mind, yeah. right? Oh, it's yeah. terrible. Tastes delicious, but Tastes delicious. you, you yeah. know it's bad for you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Okay, sorry, you were saying okay, something. Okay, yeah, I have a great tip that we've always lived by. Um, it's always better to make somebody happy, even if it costs you money to do that. Mm. Like, we're never going to... I'm never try, gonna, we're yeah. never gonna piss somebody off and like try to make more money. Mm-hmm. Like we're always gonna take the high road and be like, whatever it takes to make you happy, that's what we're gonna do. Because mm-hmm. like, at the end of the day, it's just relationships that matter. Right. Right. Like I, I have a story about that actually. Oh, I, I want to hear it. Yeah, I was. Um, th- there was this agent that we used for a couple of. Th- I think we bought two places with them and then sold. I think both of them with him as well. But on the very first one. Um, we had bought with him and we really liked him. And then we sold that same house and, uh, I forget what it was. It's something about a window that they like, didn't like the latch on the window or something. And so they wanted us to fix it. And we thought they were asking for this and they meant this. And so when they were doing like their final walkthrough, they were like, Whoa, that's not what we wanted. And they were like, Uh-oh. we're not closing. It was like a <laughs> window latch. It was crazy. <laughs> and my agent was just like, look, I'll pay for it. Like, I'll bring in a guy. I'll pay yeah. for it. Yeah. I don't think it cost them that much money, frankly. Right. Um, and I was like, awesome. Like, that's really cool that he just, yeah. like, he just took care of the problem yeah. and made sure that this deal went through. And so, of course, when it was time to buy, you know, the next place, we wanted him. There you go. And when we were going to sell it, we wanted him, right? Mm-hmm. I don't know how many thousands of dollars he made off of me, but it was yeah. a fair amount. Yeah. Right. Well, and that's what we do. I do that literally, like... Probably more than I should, honestly. But like, I I don't care. Like, I'm like, for example, that right now we're in a transaction, and um, I, it's this girl that hurts her dad, and she they've done a ton of work with us, and they really love us, and so the dad's buying this property, and uh, he just made the comment that he's like, that because it's a duplex, and the downstairs doesn't have a stove or a fridge, and I'm like, well, I'll just let's just 
I, I know that the seller is not going to do it, so I'll just get you. The, like, we're just going to mm. do it. Like, mm-hmm. I'm just going to get you it. It's going to cost me a thousand bucks, but I, this guy has a lot of pull, and I'm like, I want this guy to like me. Right, <laughs> right. So it's like, yeah, yeah. you just do those things to make it so you have relationships. Yeah. You know what I yeah. mean? So. But it's not even so much like you think that you can like leverage the relationship later. It's like, you want to make we have happy, to sleep though. at night right, and like feel good about ourselves and the yeah. job that we're doing. Yeah. We want to feel like we're like bettering our community and helping people. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, I dropped a ton of commission one time on a house that we, we were selling and I, I think I just messed up and didn't give them the correct amount of what they were supposed to come home with. Mm-hmm. Now, this is like 10,000 off. I'm like, you're right. Like I messed up. So mm-hmm. I just like, yeah, like this. I, we, I think we ended up meeting in the middle, but I'm like, you're, yeah, that's my bad. Like, yeah. you know, and so instead of me fighting and being like, well, you agreed to it. You know, I'm like, no, I, I didn't, I must, I messed up on that. So yeah. we're going to help you out. Yeah. You know, there's something really, really powerful about just doing the right thing. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and people respect that. And even if it wasn't totally smooth, but if you, you helped 100%. fix the problem and you did the right thing, then, um, Man, that that generates so much loyalty, oh, yeah. and and I've always found that if you do the right thing, it always comes back in the form of positive business. Always comes back. It's a little painful in the moment. Yeah, that client that I just told you about, I literally still use them all the time. Yeah, so and yeah. we still talk all the time. They mm-hmm. were pissed at the time. Sure, yeah. <laughs> but like, I finally was like, you know what? It's You're my like, bad. I'm gonna check. take care of it. You know, and they're like, okay, cool. Like, and they were and they were just happy that like I I we we didn't go do what they thought, but I still helped out, and it was like. It's just been great, you know. Yeah. I mean, they may never use me again, but they like at least we can have a relationship, right. which yeah. is what I care about. Right. So, at least you're yeah. not going to get stared down at the football game. Yeah, I don't <laughs> want that. You don't want that. <laughs> <laughs> I saw this quote that was, um, "How it ended is how it was," mm. and I really like that quote because mm-hmm. it's like you could have had a great relationship throughout the whole transaction, and then they're pissed off because of a discrepancy. And if you let them stay pissed off, they're going to be like that forever. Yeah, so it was terrible. Head, we don't want that. Yeah, they'll, in their head, it was always yeah. ter- it was yeah. terrible the whole time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, interesting. Um, what what other kinds of advice would you give to somebody who's who's coming up as a real estate agent? You got to hustle. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's the biggest thing. I don't care who. Well, and you got to hustle smart. Like there's, mm-hmm. you can't when you start until you. And I mean, even now, I still I, I probably don't turn off my phone enough, but. You have to, it's a, you don't get, unless you're with a brokerage that does this, you don't get paid unless you work, right? right. So you've got to be on top of it, constantly working. And it, and not just like, I feel like people that don't get transactions or get clients are like, not they're hustling in the wrong areas, right? Mm-hmm. They're like. Give us an example. Oh, gosh, I don't even know. Um, like someone's like, I'm sending out ads to all these people. And I'm like, well, what? And I'm, we're not getting calls back. So I'm mm-hmm. like, well, are you sending well, out? Stop doing that then. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, exactly. Yeah, you shouldn't so I'm do like, it. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's pretty easy. Yeah, at this point, yeah, go knock doors or go do a Facebook ad or, or do something, you know, where 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 your what your t- your skill is. Like, for yeah. example, a return missionary agent is probably going to be really good at knocking doors. Probably, yeah, sure. And they'll be able to sell you at some point. Mm-hmm. Totally. So that would be a really good option for that person. You know, just things like that. If you're market on, you know, social media savvy, use that. Right. And I think a lot of people have learned that. But when you start as an agent, you can't just be like, okay, I'm an agent. You know, <laughs> right. you got to, you just have to, hope that the universe you have to find your you. skill. Like my skill was not marketing. My skill was constantly hounding people Being on annoying. social media. <laughs> I'm annoying. No, I heard like, your dating story. Yeah. I, I, yeah. yeah, I get it. Yeah. Like, I just hound people and not hound people like annoyingly, but I'm a, like, my follow up game is legit. Like, yeah, yeah I like, wouldn't say hound people. I'd say following up. Yeah. Like, I follow yeah. up, like, every, like, especially when I first started, it was like every couple of days. I'm like, hey, have you guys seen this or this? Mm. Like, so they don't even have time to think about another mm. agent. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm like, I am the agent. <laughs> here it is. You know what I mean? And so, looking in I'm their windows. And, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That was it. Need and, a towel? And, and, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you need a towel? <laughs> Hey, you got you got a toilet paper. I got you. <laughs> Just we did bring people toilet paper during quarantine. We went and dropped it off at like our past clients' houses. That's so funny. That's awesome. I love that. Yeah. So it just seems like like. Find your skill and use that skill. Yeah, mm. I would say like find your skill and then like how can you use your skill to bring value to people? And if you do that consistently, then clients are just going to come to you. Yeah, that would yeah. be my advice. And yeah, at that point you have to do some soul searching and figure out your skill if you don't. Do your <laughs> sure. Skill. Well, I think that's fair too. You know, we had a guest on, um, and one of the things she said that I just loved so much. She said, "You got to run your own race, mm-hmm. right?" Like you guys do something that you're really, really good at. It doesn't mean that that's what I'm really good at. Right. And you got to figure out the thing that yeah, that's your that. race. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. When we do our social media class, 
There's a lot of. <laughs> it's just. I, it's getting comfy. <laughs> yeah. Well, so, uh, I'm so tall. It's, it's like I know we need now. a bigger so chair tall. option for it. So uh, <laughs> when we do a social media class, there's a lot of pushback on like what we say because mm. they're like, well, why don't like to do that? I'm like, that's great. We're like, you okay, don't do it. Don't do it. Then like don't. this is like it's we're just giving you. you options, and then you can take those options and move it around and how how you want to make it work. You know. Yeah. So I, I think there's with real estate with any honestly with any business that's like you know a, some type of sales business mm. you've got to be able to figure out your skill or develop your skill and then utilize it because i mean there's some people that just i mean are really bad at social media and they probably don't need to do that sure. yeah, making it look worse than than yeah. you know like, yeah. it just makes it worse for you <laughs> <laughs> like honestly just quit it's just like oh this guy's really weird i don't want to talk exactly. to him so i mean that's not a dig that's just like yeah you should do something else i think it's <laughs> it's a fair thing to say okay so Let's say that you're brand new in the game and you're like, I don't know what my thing is. What, what do I do? Do I just like, how do I do it? You know, a really What's good thing. What's my path forward? I, I always tell new agents that, um, especially if you're not, if you don't know, like mm -hmm. a lot of people get into the game already knowing people, they know what they're going to yeah. do. But if you get into the game and you have, if you're like brand new, yeah. get with a team. Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like get with a team because I'll help and you. And interview a bunch of different teams. Yeah. Because not all teams are created equal. Yeah. And they like, take different splits. Like, they offer different things. Right. But it's worth it for the first couple of years because it'll yeah. help you get rolling. And it'll give you ideas and, and things to do. And we've had a lot of people reach out and don't want to be, we just aren't, I don't want to be a big team. That doesn't sound fun to us. So, um, but that's, I mean, shoot, you, I'm sure you've seen the Anderson Hicks up here. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's the biggest team in Idle totally. Falls. So mm. you could get with them, and I'm sure they'd help you get something. You know what I mean? So things yeah. like that will help you get um, started. And then, you know, if you love it, you'll stay. If not, you'll go do your own thing after. Yeah, and yeah. I'd say if your goal is to, like, ultimately be on your own, not stay on a team forever, then you need to, like, really leverage all the work that you're doing while you're on the team. Mm. Like, you can't just market yourself as I'm under the team. Like, I'm right. doing work because I'm on a team. You yep. need to be able to show... I'm getting work because I'm good at my job. Right. Yeah. And yeah. that's how you can transition out of that. Yeah. yeah. You can't hide behind it forever. Yeah. yeah. Right. Cause there's those big teams and they just get work cause that's their name. Right. Right. So if you leave that all of a sudden, you know, you're just, but some people do great on a team sure. and that's, and that's where they say, and it's awesome. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that, and that's, and that goes with anything, like any type of sales job. I'm like, you got to get with either a company that or some mentor or something. If you don't know where to start. Cause I mean, it's super scary and people that take the plunge without having any, idea of where to start i mean kudos to them because i wouldn't do that That's... you did <laughs> well i mean like i mean we had an idea you did though. do that we, what know, are you talking about? we know people we knew how we were yeah, going to do true. stuff like it was uh, we talked about before we got started we're like social media sucks here. yeah so we're like we are going to leverage mm. that yeah i mean if you're just you're like free will, if you're free balling it and just going for it and go for it <laughs> that's pretty wild the team is your whitey tighties <laughs> <laughs> that is, <laughs> that's a great one. <laughs> oh I'm putting that on my business card. That's right. You the should. Team, it's your whitey tidies. Don't free ball it. Yeah. Don't free ball it. <laughs> oh my goodness. You guys, it was so funny. Uh, okay. So Bailey, I, I always miss like about a dozen questions that I was supposed to ask. Bailey, what, yeah. what did I miss? Um, you mentioned mentors. Have you guys yeah. had talk about mentors and no, I, I think we've had, we haven't had any mentors personally. Um, I think we've had people that have helped us a lot in terms of like, just obviously questions. But I mean, if you have a good brokerage, and I mean, we've had a lot of friends that have been doing real estate before, they were able to help us. But we don't, I, we never set out and set like, hey, I need like, you to this mentor. This is my mentor. Mm -hmm. you know what I mean? like, but um, there's lots of people. The that agent that was going to have Brandon be the buyer's agent helped Brandon a ton. Tony, yeah, Tony he's Green. awesome. And he's been doing it for a while. So he did, he helped me a ton up first. Yeah, he was, um, he was there a lot, like helping with contracts and stuff. Um, mm. And then he just was like, I just don't have, I'm not busy enough for you. Yeah. So yeah. then I kind of, then I was like, oh crap. So then I had to go do my own thing. Yeah. yeah. And so free balling. But like yeah. any, yeah. any brokerage, your broker should always be available to like be a mentor yeah. to you. Yeah. So yeah. yeah, there's definitely people that we have relied on heavily. Yeah. You don't, I mean, you don't started, go into real estate. Just, I mean, there would be it'd be dang near impossible to get started with on real estate because the class that you take is not legit in terms of like preparing you preparing for you for real estate. So yeah, anyways. Okay. But it good probably is a really yeah. good idea for somebody with, like to have a mentor if they're just starting out and they don't really know what to do. I, yeah, right. I, I think that's a great idea. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Brandon was my mentor, so sure. Yeah. I mean, I've helped a lot of people. Like I haven't been like I'm your mentor, but like 
I'm like, yeah, that's what you do. Yeah, mo- most of them are fairly informal relationships, yeah. Yeah. right? Mm-hmm. They're just people that help you along the way. They see something in you and they say, yeah, I'm going to help this person out. And yeah. Yeah. I, uh, I'm not into, I don't even think I'd. I could never see you being like, I'm your mentor. I'm your mentor. <laughs> <laughs> it would laugh so hard. <laughs> I'm not like that. He's I'm like, not like that. I will say, though, Brandon, when he takes pictures with the clients, uh-huh. he always looks like their dad. <laughs> <laughs> He's like their proud dad at the title company. And they're all shorter than me. <laughs> right. Well, yeah. Yeah. yeah I'm, I'm like six foot, and he walks in, and I'm, I... He's... Were you scared? I'll make no, a little. I don't think so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was just surprised at how tall you were. Yeah. Yeah. What advice would you give uh, for finding a good work life balance? Ooh. Well, depending on your. Oh, do you want ours? Or do you mm-hmm. want. Okay. Yeah. You go first. Because I don't have one. So. <laughs> <laughs> Brandon very frequently is like. I'm like, when are you coming home? I don't know. I'm just so busy. Blah, blah. I'm like, well, can you come home? He's like, what would you do if I had an eight to five job? Like, what would you do if I had I'm one? like, you would be home at five. <laughs> It'd be awesome. <laughs> um, ask people for help. Mm. Ask people for help. We were spending a long time doing like documents and stuff. So that's when we hired his sister. She got mm-hmm. licensed and she's an agent now too. Um, before she was an agent, she was doing our, our documents um, and that took off a lot from Brandon and freed up a lot of his time. Mm-hmm. I think the biggest thing, especially like our age, like I feel like, in all honesty, the older generation, if like there's a lot of agents that got started in their 40s, 50s, and, and even 60s. Mm-hmm. I feel like they already had like they already had an established like how to work a little bit. I mm-hmm. mean, not all of them, but they just you know they. So our generation, I feel like, doesn't like if you wake up and you watch Netflix, and you go to the... Like, that's so much thing, so many things that you shouldn't be doing at that mm-hmm. time. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So, so you're I, saying manage your time better? Yes. Like, for me, I never had a... I didn't know how to manage my time at first. So yeah. I was like... I went from zero to 100 so fast, but I feel like now I'm like, okay, I can sit down at 9 o'clock and we can watch a movie. Like, before I, be like, before I go to bed, I have to message 16 clients. Yeah. And you know what I mean? Like yeah. I, So I think... Knowing that, like, you treat your job like it's an eight to five, so you work during the time frame that people are working, mm-hmm. and then also work a little bit later because when people are home is a great time to be messaging people. Right. And then at that point, it's like, okay, then you can kind of fill where your where your time is best spent, right? Like, I've learned that I don't need to be working at eight a.m. with real estate. It's just right. There's not many people looking to go see houses or do things at eight a.m. So mm-hmm. I uh, my day starts a little bit later now. I mm-hmm. moved it back. So. I don't know. I feel like the work-life balance is you've got to look at where your time is best spent. I know that between 12 and 5 is like when real estate is bumping for me. Yeah. 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 And you've gotten really good at this. It's like our, like the family's got to come first. Your family mm-hmm. and your kids always have to come first. And so like we're lucky we, we get to schedule around that for the most part. So it's like if our daughter has a soccer game – and you have to work, you're really good about yeah, I'm like, like, okay, being aware of, like, I'm not going to schedule things during this time, obviously. Yeah. yeah. Like, I used to. That was a problem. Yeah. yeah. It was yes. an issue. So, like, because yeah. I was like, we have to make money or we will die. Right. You know what I mean? Like, that was it. Sure. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. So. I, I had a, a, a mentor of mine tell me one time, they're like, you have to figure out what your non-negotiables are. Yes. Correct. Wh- whatever those things are. Figure out what your non-negotiables are and be absolutely ruthless with them. Yes. Right. But everything else you can kind of, you know, go like with the a flow really and figure out what you're that, doing. That I had happen that I'm really proud of myself is I was going to the ISU game and it was my nephew's first start and uh, I was walking in and one of my sellers was like, Hey, do you have time for a call? I'm like, actually I don't. Mm-hmm. I'm going to the ISU game. I don't want to be on a call right now. So I just was like, Hey, I'm going to the game. I'll give you a call either tomorrow or Monday. Mm-hmm. Like, great. I'm like like I yeah. W- normal yeah, and people will respect that. Normal normal me, that yeah. I think that took us a long time to realize. Like, if you set those boundaries, people are going to respect those boundaries. Yeah. A lot of agents we know we don't do this because we're, I don't know, we don't we don't want to ignore people, I guess. But a lot of agents we know just like put their phone on do not disturb at like seven o'clock at night mm-hmm. and just ignore mm-hmm. their phone till the next morning, mm-hmm. which is probably great. Th- yeah, I, I don't, yeah. I don't. But we want to be like we want to be available. I'll text back mm-hmm. for sure. Mm-hmm. Like I, at seven thirty, eight thirty, I'm I'm not gonna be probably answering calls unless there's an emergency. Right. Because most of the time you can't do anything at that point anyways. Right. Yeah. So I mean I I feel like we on the weekends I try I've been trying to back off a little bit but not be non-responsive because like there's that's the most annoying thing when I text an agent and they don't respond to me until I text them Friday night and they don't text me back until mm-hmm. Monday. Yeah. I'm like what are you doing? That's the worst. Yeah. Come on. Like yeah. you know yeah. you can text mm-hmm. back. Yeah. 
but also some agents, again, in Pocatello don't text. They just like to call. So <laughs> they don't, they're, I don't know if they know how to text. <laughs> <laughs> so. <laughs> Anyways, great time. Yeah. Did we answer the question? <laughs> the Zach, question? did you have something you wanted to say? You have a question. You can kind of answer this how you will because I don't want it to be negative, but in the past few years, I feel like there's kind of been a stigma where anyone and everyone can become a real estate agent. Mm-hmm. People have 100%. because they see the value in it yeah. and easy money. How has that hurt or helped So I think everything? I believe it's helped show the good ones mm-hmm. because you've got so many. And, and so there's this 80-20 rule. Right. Have you guys heard that where it's 20% mm-hmm. of the agents do 80% of the work? Yep. And I think it's even more than that. I think that's generous. Yeah. Um, the bad agents will not get the work. That, that they, will, they won't get the referrals. They won't. And so the more agents there are, the more competitive it gets. And the more you have to be ethical, you have to be good at your job, and you have to be responsive. Because mm-hmm. literally everyone has a family member or a friend that's an agent. Sure. So how am I going to become that person's agent over that friend? You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So I think it's been good, personally. I think it's been good for us. Maybe not good as a whole because of the name of the way it's, mm. you know what I mean? But mm-hmm. for us, it's made us become more competitive and, you know, we, we work hard to make sure that we keep our reputation really good. So yeah. That's great. Awesome. Yeah. Okay. What do you think the best investment you guys has ever made? Was it the hot tub? Yes. <laughs> Three hundred dollars. <laughs> it's made us endless amounts of money. Brandon <laughs> broke that hot tub. I'm I broke still it. mad about it. And I wouldn't change the filter. The filter was this ridiculous, like stupid cool. No, filter. he just took the filter out and never put we it back in. We had no money in. to replace it. It was twelve dollars. Like, ah, it's fine. It's the old water. Yeah, that's your whole yearly salary, right? Yeah, there. Really? Twelve dollars. Yeah. Do, do I want to change my filter? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I might go out and get one of those later today. I know. Dude, honestly, I feel inspired by that. They have them at Costco that. right now. I just yeah. don't okay, now let me tell you. Garage. They're actually yeah. legit. In terms, like, what do you mean? Hold on, real quick. I want you to buy one because they're like they're perfect for kids. I wanted to get one. Oh, they're amazing for kids. Because okay. they're like they're, they're short. Like the raft, they're like, they're they're like they're the raft really material, so they're pretty legit. Yeah, that's yeah. yeah. cool. Yeah, it'd be a good. Like one. they can like sit on the side. I might have to go buy one. Yeah, I don't like my kids in my hot tub because they get it all gross and dirty. Yeah, they're gross. Oh well, I'm not liking this idea then. Yeah. What do you mean gross? Well, like 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 in the summer there's constant grass and all that yeah. so I'm like this is yours <laughs> oh there you go you know I mean? yeah like, this is for the kids yeah, $300 versus I like that you're, sit, you're talking you like we actually have a separate hot tub for the kids <laughs> I'm saying, I'm saying, like, I thought about it <laughs> this is your, so we didn't do that we don't uh, have like a, separate hot, a tub hot tub for every person right <laughs> anyway, I like that. do you mean like like in terms of money <laughs> just in general however you want to interpret that so I mean even if it's not something physical, like what investment do you think has led you to where you guys are? I, I we might have different answers. I think our first house we ever bought. Oh. What do you think? You think that? I think that was our best investment because not only, like, okay, so we rented out the basement and lived in the top. Our mortgage was like 750 back in the day. Mm-hmm. This is 2015. <laughs> we were like freaking out. I don't know if we can afford so many dollars a month. And so we rented out the basement for 500. So we paid 250 wow. a month. Yeah. And I mean that was when we were dirt broke. So that was amazing. And then um, and it still hurt when I saw it come out. I know it still hurt. Still hurt. <laughs> Brandon's like I can't I can't coach enough CrossFit to <laughs> to pay the mortgage. Um, and then obviously when we sold it, we sold it to some buddies and we made a little chunk of change from selling it. But like that to me was like my realization of like, oh, like there, there are good ways to spend money. I had such a scarcity mindset mm. just from growing up so poor mm-hmm. that I was like, just like hoard everything, right? Yeah. Money, items, all sorts of like, you know. And so um, that was like the beginning of like, changing my mindset about money. Mm -hmm. So for me, that would probably be the best one. What about you, Mm. Brandon? Uh, It's like the restaurant, because I get burritos. (laughs) Yeah, that's pretty cool. (laughs) It hasn't been long enough to say if that's a good investment or not yet, though. Um, So far it is. So far it is. Um, So I think, oh gosh, I would say the best money that, I'm going to go with money on this one, because I think we've done a lot of, mental things that have been great investments for us but i don't think that like there's one that stands out okay i would say our best investment money wise was our very first flip because Mm -hmm. that was phyllis Mm -hmm. but it not because it it was a great name not because of the name but because it showed me what investing your money would do 
Mm. I didn't ever have an investment at that point. Right. We were only making commissions off of, and so I spent a mo- I spent money to make money, and that was the first time I ever did that. Why don't you give us like exact numbers just to give so people an idea? On that house, we bought it at I believe it was one seventy five, and it was up in the West Bed, so it was a little bit nicer of an area. Mm-hmm. And at that time, it was a two seventy five resale. Mm-hmm. I was about a thirty k remodel, so I was just about two hundred five. Mm-hmm. So I sold it for two seventy five, I think, right around there, and. After everything, probably walked away with about 50, 60K. Mm-hmm. I was like, oh, like, dang. Holy crap. Wow. That was right? cool. Like, I'm, yeah. what is going on? So that big old chunk of change. And then from there, it's just been flip after flip after mm-hmm. flip, right? Mm-hmm. So I took that money, and we've obviously just been reinvesting it. And we've learned that you don't even have to use your own money to invest. Tell lots us about learning, that. Tell of, us about I'm that. I'm like, what? Well, yeah. what do you well, mean? You have, to, you have to use, okay, so your first one, you got to use your own money right. generally, unless you can get a gift from someone. Right. But after that, if you're smart, you have to really make sure your numbers are, are legit. But you now have, okay, so I made 50, 60K. That's a down payment, 20% on most flips right. that you're going to get. You can either A, go to a bank and be like, hey, will you do some type of construction, you know, some type of deal, which is very possible for mm-hmm. a lot of banks. Like I've used D11s in Pocatello for a few of those because mm-hmm. if I don't know if you guys have one here. but Oh, like you don't use us? Now's your time to, yeah. to yeah, give well, us a plug. Yeah. <laughs> my cousin works there and, he's, and they were like, they were like begging for my... <laughs> It, sorry, but they they had sorry. a. Sorry, we're gonna edit that part out. Yeah, this is gonna be where he said D11s. It's gonna be like it's gonna be Please. Zach saying East Idaho <laughs> Credit Union. But hold on, let's back up though. So I was just giving you an example of a bank that does that. Now we use hard money for all of our sales. Okay. Besides the very first one, because I didn't have a record of doing flips, so I had right. to have someone take a risk on me. Right. Now I've got a record. I use hard money guys, and they they're like. They just throw their money And out guess there. what? 9% interest? We pay 9% interest on every investment all the with time. the hard money. Yeah. yeah. So, so it's like, to me, 9% interest, I'm like, yeah, you can figure it out. Yeah. And it'll be fine. Because I mean, but yeah. you're not going to hold it for 30 years. Yeah, exactly. No, we're spending sure. about, yeah. give or take about a thousand bucks a month yeah. to hold it. So if I can get it in six months done or less, then okay, great. I'm, I spent $6,000. So you just have to add that into your, your amounts. So if you get your first flip and you come out of the positives, whether you refinance it and get that money out or you sell it and get that money out, you now use that money to go for your next one. And then you just keep multiplying it, making your money back, maybe keeping some money and then using that for your next down payment. And so, I mean, when you, there's people that I talk to that, I mean, they're out there, they're pulling out millions of dollars to get their huge, because they've done it so many times yeah. that now they're pulling out millions of dollars to go get a huge piece of real estate. Yeah. You know what I mean? So yeah. it's just a very good Again, turning that wheel mm-hmm. and making sure your numbers are correct and, and all you have to do is, I mean, it's not all. I mean, that's hard to find your first down payment for 20%. Right, yeah. But if you can get that figured out, that's a great way to get started. Yeah. Awesome. Solid. All right. What's your message to the world? Mm. Oh, gosh. <laughs> oh, I know. I'll tell you. I'll, can, I your say, can I say Jessica's? Can Tip I say your Jessica's? waitress. Uh-oh. I love that. Yeah, everyone needs to be a waiter at some point. Yes. I, I agree. I agree with us. Yes. I agree. You we both worked at Roadhouse. And it made me point. not like people. So. That's <laughs> rude. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was a waiter when I was like uh, 17, 18. Yeah. And it's it can be rough. It can be, it can be rough. really rough. But I feel like it makes yeah. it, I, mean, I feel like it makes you a better person at a restaurant. I think that's true too. Yeah. Yeah. I always tip well at restaurants because I know what that life is like yeah. and experienced it. And well, I'm always really nice to them, the yeah. wait staff yeah. too, because so I know how one. hard it is. Yeah. yeah. Is Jen- that your message to the world? No, I'm just, that was just one. That was <laughs> tip, tip your waitress <laughs> is great. It's yeah. a good one. Yeah, I like that. Put that on a t-shirt. Honestly. Yeah. Um, <laughs> my message to the world is make sure your relationships are dialed in. Good relationships. That's I think that's being just as big as Yeah, that's number one for sure. Um, Adopt a kid. Mm. Yes. That's very cool. Oh my gosh, yes. I feel so passionate about foster care. Like even before we met our daughter, everybody who should, who can foster needs to foster. Not You don't a have to adopt. Percent. You don't need to adopt if you don't want. Should, mm-hmm. I think you should look into foster care. I think because like, if you have room in your home, in your heart, you need to foster. Mm-hmm. At least one kid. Mm-hmm. At least one kid. Because it gives you an outside perspective of the world that you mm-hmm. do have no idea about. And it breaks your heart a little bit, a lot, a lot. But it is a very, it's a very needed thing that, like me and Jess, mentally had to stop. Like we just couldn't do it anymore for a mm-hmm. minute. Like we were like, yeah. Like just between taking on our daughter having a kid and all the trauma that came with that, mm-hmm. we're like, we can't mentally handle another person mm-hmm. well. We will probably get back into it once we, once our kids are older, and mm-hmm. we can, but like. Just the things that you see honestly make me a better parent because, like, 
like it, when I think about the things that happened or things that could happen, I'm like, oh no. Like, and so like you instantly have like a warm spot in your heart for all kids now. Like mm. I used to be like, oh, kids suck. Yeah. <laughs> but now you can see like, oh, maybe they're acting like that. Maybe they're acting some, like that because they had a they terrible have... upbringing. Right. Yeah. yeah. And nine out of 10 kids have a, in foster care, have a terrible upbringing. Yeah. And it's super sad. Yeah. There's a reason they're there. Yeah. yeah. Oh, and yeah. like, yeah. Anyways, that's something that's like very... I'd say everyone needs to foster. It'll make you a better person. <laughs> well, I, you know, I, what's so interesting about those programs, uh, my wife and I actually looked into that okay. maybe 15 years ago, something okay. like that, a long time ago, and we ended up having our own kids and, mm-hmm. and didn't do it, but it's something we've continued to talk about. It's something that we might want to do at some point. And um, one of the things that, that kind of became apparent to me about it is you probably get to see, ooh, like the two like polar opposites of humanity. You get to mm-hmm. see some of the very worst Mm-hmm. And then you get to see some of the most beautiful things yeah, in the 100%. whole world, right? Yeah. It is such All a roller the same coaster. Experience. Yeah. yeah, and the saddest part for me was when I, because like I, I went to Highland High School, which is a little bit more up on the hill. You don't see you, you're kind of like sheltered from the mm. world there. Until after high school, I didn't even realize like there was other bad things in the world, right? Yeah. So um, when once we went to foster care, and like I like. There's many, there's so many kids that are in foster care that you have no idea that are going to school, they're living right. with your friend. Mm-hmm. Right. Like, and they are, and it, like. And when they call you to see if you're going to take a placement, they give you, like, a bit of the backstory mm-hmm. about, like, why they're there, because you need to know, like, if that's something you can handle. Mm-hmm. So some of the stories we heard were like, I got a call one time are you on serious? Halloween. Was on it Halloween. We got a call on Halloween where they literally just pulled the kids out. The parents out or the kids out, I can't remember, but they had the three kids of them. had their costumes on. Ready to go trick or treating. Ready to go trick or treating yes. and the parents just got arrested. And mm. pulled out. That's sad. And they're like how awful. Like that and they were in their costumes. Then they're like four, six, and like nine. Mm. I was like Well, this is the worst thing I've ever heard in my entire life. Like yeah. it killed me. Yeah. yeah. So I was like things like that, like and it just happens over and over. So I'm like, we just need more people to be foster parents. Yes. Because <laughs> the foster parents a lot of the times are not great. You know, we, so East Idaho Credit Union has a foundation, okay. a charitable foundation. And um, one of the things that we've contributed some money to and participated in is um, it's a really cool program, it, but it, it has to do with these exact situations where they pull the kids out and they have nothing but the clothes on their back, right? Mm-hmm. That is it. And so this program actually goes and helps them purchase clothing and things like that, things that they really That's need. That's so great. Get re- so can I plug our fundraiser? Yes. Because yeah. yeah. it's, com- yeah. it's coming up. Yeah, um, so I always post it on Black Friday. So we... Um, I'm gonna we're gonna I'm gonna try to go huge this year. Yeah, I would like to go huge. I love like it. how huge. Like we as many about as many <laughs> volunteers as possible to get like because like oh we to have, go shopping you mean? Yeah, I want to get as much money and as many var- volunteers. I'd love to get like the so whole we sponsor East Idaho. we sponsor like X amount. Last year it was ten kids uh, in foster care for Christmas because our first Christmas fostering our daughter, they sent us a check to for get her presents and it was how much? Twenty five dollars. Twenty five dollars. For Christmas. Like, and we were lucky enough to be able to, like, spend more on her, and yeah. we wanted to, but, but a lot of times what about the kids who, like, have foster parents that just, can't. like, pocket that, or they can't uh, get yeah. them more? Yeah. So, um, yeah, we do, a, regardless we do a fundraiser like every, yeah. yeah, especially nowadays. So we do a fundraiser every Christmas season, and we've been able to get every single item on every kid's list oh, every great. year. Plus more. So it's been amazing. Like so we'll post about it on social media. Yeah, like, if there's one thing I want to do, it's, like, like you guys know and i'm hopefully you know that you know when you woke up on christmas it was amazing right like mm-hmm. you had all this awesome you know for and i want like for me i had that experience every every year and i it literally breaks my heart to know of like kids waking up from like not having the uh you know waking up and having literally nothing or right. a pair of socks right, right? like it's yeah. like they already have it super super rough mm-hmm. let's get them the most over like we over spoiled our our daughter the first year because it was the same way. I'm like, get them everything they want and more. It was too much. <laughs> but like those kids, great. They can have everything they want yeah. more because that's the one day a year that they can, they literally will have everything. Yeah. They, besides obviously. And obviously that's physically. not going to fix all their problems, but it's like at least just one time where like, it's supposed it's to be so them. special for yeah. the kids where it's like all about them. And they like, we've got kids hoverboards, iPads, <laughs> like literally everything on their list. We're like, yes, <laughs> it's awesome. You know? So yeah. well, I, and shout I, out to everybody who's donated yeah. for that. I think it's really easy to overlook the impact that kindness has on the world around yeah. us. Mm-hmm. Um, and even little things, you know, does it fix everything in these children's lives? You know, of course not. But they'll always be able to fall back on this moment where they right. were cared for 
Yeah, yeah. and somebody 100%. was yeah. kind to them. Yeah. yeah, one girl last year was going to college, so we got her like a bunch of plant of, of appliances and like stuff for like her dorm. Mm-hmm. So I, I mean, we can't like talk to the child or like see the reaction or anything, but I can just imagine that she yeah. like felt so much relief, right? Not having to like buy those things herself. Yeah, and then like Amazing. yeah, just all the kids that are. I mean, you know, when you anywhere, it doesn't matter what school you go to. You have kids that come home with. Or they they go back to school and they're like, oh, I got the Xbox, I got, and then there's a kid that literally got nothing. Yeah. And it's just like that's gotta be no matter what, that's a heartbreaker in that right. kid, and that's gonna stay with them whether we get them something or we don't get them nothing. So we want it to be. I mean, you want to have a good experience. I feel like that's something that we can't do everything, but that's something that we can really help out with. So. Amazing. That's awesome. I I think <laughs> that feels like the right place to end. Yes, yeah, <laughs> right. Um, Jess, Brandon, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, it was awesome to learn about all of your experiences and and the things that you're passionate about. Uh, and thank you for joining us on East Idaho Credit Union's Dragon Slayer podcast. We'll see you next time. Woo! Thank you. Look, I watched the video. You need to watch the I'm not real video. convinced. A little dust could have flown by in front of the lens and, and done all that, right? You like, know it's what? Not the, that ghost, exciting. the Ghostbuster people came and talked about the video and said it was real. The Ghostbuster mm, people? What's it called? That, that makes me f- the, feel like it's less. Not the, <laughs> not the <laughs> Ghostbuster. Dang it. No, what is that show called? The Ghostbusters. Thank their, you. Their, 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 their like fungineering degrees that they earned. Like, these aren't real people. Come on. This is a little Like, oh, it's going crazy right now. Like, yeah, they don't make money unless they find ghosts. It's a ghost. Oh, yeah, yeah. Definitely haunted this one. Yeah, yeah. You're going to need to retain me for about (laughs) 10,000 to take care of this one. Yeah. That's that's what the. uh, That's exactly right. I just don't buy it. I agree. But I want, like, I want, I want to. I have had some in my house. I have had some creepy intercom things going through. Oh, the basement. Like, where I listened to it and heard it and it scared the crap out of me. And what did it say? What? I can I watch you. Guys, we lived guys, in the basement of his parents' so house, my, and there was this like really dark hallway, and I would always just sprint through the hallway. <laughs> I'm like 20 years old. <laughs> so it's like a, it was when I was like nine or ten, and my sister was like 16 or 17. She was sick. Anyway, we had the old school intercom where you plugged in, right? Yeah. So, was like, yeah. so she was downstairs, and she was talking to my mom upstairs. Well, every time she would, and I like I heard this, like I lit, and I was like, I was like, what is going on? But uh, and she would, she kept asking my mom questions, and then this like weird. Sounding Wait, so you were listening to the conversation between your upstairs, mom? Upstairs, yes. And your sister. I was on the main floor. And you were just, just chilling, listening. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, I would watch. Uh, it was the weirdest thing. So my sister would be like, "Mom, can I have some soup or something?" And then it'd be like, "Mommy, can I have some soup?" In the back, like, like a couple, like ten seconds after, and my mom's like, "What are you doing, Terry?" <laughs> She's like, well, I thought that was. I thought there was. I thought like some, one of the grandkids was here, mm. and it happened like six times. And so mm. I don't know if it was like someone like re- interfering in like. What a hilarious like a joke by your dad! Yeah. <laughs> what like it was a creepy thing I've ever heard. And, mom, and my sister came running up, so she's like, "I'm not sleeping downstairs if that was not you guys." And we're like, "It was not us." My mom's like, "I'm. We are the only two here." What if your mom goes to her grave? With the secret that it was her message. I was with watching your her. I was watching her. I could see oh, you were it. Those, like, I was in the, I was Those in the are the So you guys thought it was Terry being like, hey, me, me, Yeah, because my mom went to the thing. She's like, What are you talking about? She's like, I thought that was you. What are you talking about? Oh. And I was like, I was in the doorway watching my mom talk to Terry, like on the on the intercom. And I'm like, What in the hell is How going do you on know here? it wasn't Terry? It's Do you think Terry, ter- Terry hates scary? She came sprinting upstairs, freaking out. She is the most honest person. Yeah, I know. she's our <laughs> transaction coordinator. She's she was the perfect <laughs> person Terry. to do this to. Uh, I know. Yeah, I, he I just he'll it. never believe. Never I can believe. give her. He, uh, yeah, he'll never believe. <laughs> I will say the best jokes are the ones you take to your grave. <laughs> I'm about to, I'm about to I speed dial like, Terry right now. I have, yeah, that. you should. I've been having the urge to like do like a long term prank on my daughter. You should, yeah. <laughs> like a like a spooky one. Like That's like awful. we go to a yard sale and like she gets a doll, and then I make her believe it's haunted. <laughs> That's awful. <laughs> like I'm like, you can't take that doll home. It's gonna haunt us. And then we leave it there. But then I secretly like bring it in the house and it's sitting on the couch. Okay, I, I have but, like a... throughout the years, like skip a year and then do something else. Like I threw that thing away and then I, it's like I sitting have on your counter a with long, trash on it. A long term prank I've been playing on a friend for about a decade. Okay, that's pretty good. <laughs> Does he listen to your podcast? He probably not. Okay, yeah, so we're, safe, then. yeah, yeah, we're too good of friends. Wait, is it for still to going? Care. Yeah, it's okay. still going. We're too good of I've, friends for him to care. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god, there is so much truth in that though. <laughs> that's true. Um. And I've spent 
hundreds of dollars on this this practical joke over the years. So I uh, started sending him random magazine subscriptions. <laughs> All, it's stupid, I know, but it makes him insane. It's the best thing ever. So, so, uh, and they're all addressed to Turd Ferguson, right? All of them are Turd Ferguson, and he's he, he's moved, and the subscriptions follow him, with, like everywhere that he That's moves. Honestly, amazing. I I've had Ferguson. a lot of fun, and so I never bring it up, but every now and again. I'll like I'll be at his place and I'll be like, huh, cigar aficionado. This is a weird one for you to have. You don't smoke. And he's like, I know, I know. It's this Turd Ferguson guy. I keep getting his mail. It's driving me crazy. So for for like a decade I've been doing this. Oh, gosh, that's that's great. I've had a lot of fun with that's it. Incredible. That's incredible. You give me some good ideas. 